Diaz, at least. Uh, yeah, I think I've got you. Sweet. Ah, oh, good stuff. How's it going, my man? Very good. <laughs> oh, but you're singing already. <laughs> yes. Yeah. No, no, I, didn't, I didn't bring a mic stand. This is, this is the way I did the whole album anyway without a mic stand. And obviously, I'm not going to travel. Yeah. It's been brilliant. <laughs> you have a, have a nice sore shoulder there, bud. Or yeah, it's fine. Strong I'll, ones already, but <laughs> I'll just change reps, bro. You know what I mean? Halfway through. Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. But. <laughs> it's like it's like mothers and their kids, but like you know, if you lift up a kid now, you, the max you and I could hold a baby is like two minutes, <laughs> and then you exactly. get some mothers, and if I can hold the baby for like an hour, but no, know, that's arm. superhuman for sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Proper like isolation training. You just like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you gotta fall off the chair then. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going that side there, man? Yeah, cool, Berlin. A beautiful day. Eh? Jeez, it's warm, eh? It's like 33 degrees. It's hot, eh? Yeah. yeah wasn't so yesterday baking, there, bud? Wasn't it like 41 or something? Yeah, no, I don't know if it got, maybe in parts it got into the 40s, but we were cooking. That's why we ended up, uh, only thing you do is just go and drink beer at the river, right? It's, 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 it's terrible. It's, it's an international way of, of of cooling down, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and there's enough decent beer there, so. Oh no, it's great. Eh? It's so cool. Yes. I've loved it. I eh? she's my first time in Berlin. Absolutely love it. Bicycles. Um, they've got Uber. They've got Uber bicycles. Yeah. Wow. But you scan yeah. with your freaking Uber app that I use in South Africa, and it fucking unlocks the bicycle, and you get on, no and, it works, and it's got 30 kilometer radius, and it's electric. So you press what? Your gears, how much fast? How fast do you want to go? You you can't believe how fast they go. It's Ten cents yes. a minute. And so we just, I just cruise. I'm like, let's just get on. So Uber bikes, it's flipping brilliant. Uber bicycles, they got the scooters. They've got, they launched the scooters two weeks ago. Apparently they had to pass some legislation. Um, and um, two weeks, so now they're just scootering everywhere. It's nuts. This place is crazy. You got some water and stuff there, bud? I do. And I might click my fingers a few times at, at the delightful young Eileen. <laughs> no, that's I got, cool, bud. I've got, got some coffee and all good, yeah. How right, many cool, times have you good. sung that song? Come on. I, <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Imagine how many times she's heard this. We're yes, just supposed, to, we're supposed to stand back and roll our eyes and go, can you believe how human people are? <laughs> that's, yeah. what people, that's what people do. They go to, their, they go to that safe place. Eh? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Familiarity. I reckon... Waking at dawn. All right, a massive how's it art. Thanks so much for joining us on the Ridiculously Human podcast. Hey guys, thank you, man. How are you doing? Yeah, but super Brilliant, well, man. my man. Super well. Seriously, <laughs> it's like kind of starstruck in a way. We can't believe that we're chatting to you. It's just seriously amazing chatting to like a childhood sort of hero, you know? Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, that's cool. It still hasn't really sunk in for me that that actually exists, but um, I do hear people <laughs> say that from time to time and it's always flattering. So thank you guys, man. Cool. That's cool, man. Yeah. We, uh, so we got the full lowdown on you from our man, Sean Nicholson. And uh, <laughs> so thanks to him for putting us, or well, thanks to Sean o for putting us in contact. It was, it was epic. Shawnee, one of my oldest friends. That's cool. He's a classic as well. Yeah. Yeah, How do you actually know Sean? What, do you guys go to school together? Or? Sean and I, actually, uh, he was very good friends with one of my very earliest girlfriends in my life when I was like 20 odd. Um, and obviously, so we moved on, the girlfriend, but Sean and I remained friends. So Sean and I didn't break up. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> So we, we, we flip and love having people uh, on our show from the arts and um, uh, because, of, you know, the appreciation of art and music is a very fundamental human trait, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I think so. It's, it, historically, it, it seems to have been more appreciated and it seems to be the thing that stands through in tough times that people resonate and gravitate towards entertainment. You know, that's the one thing that never seems to die. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. 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 So we're super stoked, man. So thanks again. So, oh, just growing up in Durban, South Africa, I can imagine uh, the beach and the ocean featured uh, uh, in your life quite a lot. Uh, what was a typical day like growing up uh, for you? Uh, it was interesting. You know, I had a single, single parent upbringing. Um, never got to meet my dad when I was young. Uh, <clears throat> and so <clears throat> I was just to see this, this guy, like, throwing ball with the kids. I was like, who's that tall dude with all the other families have got? <laughs> but I, but I was quite, all the other families have a tall guy with a deep voice and he scares the crap out of them often. And sometimes he claps them and stuff like that. I mean, who's that guy? I'm, I'm kind of glad I don't have that dude around because I just have to ask one person's permission. You know what I mean? So it was yeah. very, it was very weird. I never, I never searched until later. I didn't even really question. I was just like, man, I think for a while, you know, kids are weird when they're young and they're dealing with, 
I guess, trauma. I think for a while, I, I definitely remember saying he was dead. <laughs> in, wow. like, in like pre-primary school, I just didn't know. Um, and I, do, I wasn't saying it because he had angered me or because I, because of any issues. I was genuine. I was like, well, I think he's dead. I haven't seen I mean, if he was alive, surely I would have seen him, you know? It was that, it was that weird. <clears throat> and yet, <clears throat> totally normal for me. Um, so I know for a long time that I was just like, yeah, where's, uh, where's, that, where's that guy? I don't know. Anyway, the point is, I only have to ask mom if I can go and get in the water. And most of the times, she, it was yes. And all my other mates were like, oh, my, my mom said yes. My dad said no. Well, the other way around. I was like, geez, you guys have like this, this two, two, two way, like two factor security thing that you have to get to. <laughs> That's only coming later with, <laughs> with Google and stuff. Um, <laughs> And so, yeah, it was a very chill upbringing. Uh, my mom gave everything for me, sacrificed absolutely everything. Um, I, I didn't lack for anything, but we had nothing. You know, we really had nothing. <laughs> it, was, it was incredibly humble. Um, but we had the ocean, which was cool. And I got into the ocean a lot. Um, really enjoyed being in the water. I really should have surfed then because I was actually a bodyboarder because, well, frankly, we couldn't afford a surfboard. And I found a bodyboard and stuff like that. So I used to just go flop in the water and, I was in. I used also once. I also picked up a big, big like log of a of a longboard, as well. It wasn't mine. <laughs> when I went out and went out and like started longboarding and enjoyed that, but I never got into shortboarding, which I really regret because I'm still battling with shortboarding. Like I still, I'm an absolute kook out there, but I insist that I'm going to get good sometime soon. Nice. And uh, so we'll get back into it. Uh, very soon, and I and I do consider myself a surfer, but I'm a horrific surfer at the moment. But I do love it. Oh, that's cool. But you can you can come join me. I'm moving to Portugal in a few months and I'm going to learn to surf. I'm, I'm a Joe Big Boy, so I definitely uh, have never done it in my life. Um, but uh, yeah, when, when, we're all, when I'm set up there, you can come and teach me. But. <laughs> right, that's the place, man. Portugal's great and it's, and it's on my radar as well for places I want to visit and, and come surf and, and, and just check out in general. <clears throat> right, lucky, man. That's awesome, bud. Hmm. <clears throat> And, and, and basically, I think you also have your skipper license and you're also into your kite surfing and stuff, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. I got my, I got my, um, it's called the coastal, <clears throat> coastal skipper yacht master. Um, I got that in 2010 for some reason. I had a dream. I still have a dream. In fact, it's getting a lot closer to being realized, but I, I wanted to, I want to be based off a boat, man. I'm like, I want to live mm. on a boat. Wow. I can do my, I mean, we're doing everything that we're doing with technology wise to make this podcast happen offered in my backpack to to berlin so next time i will remember to bring a mic stand so that you don't get all of this all that but um <laughs> my point is, is that you can do this on a, on a boat easily uh, i did my last album on this exact laptop that we have. i mean it's a it's a very high spec laptop yeah. um and you can travel you can do it anyway so my my art now apart from flying in and out for shows is to record music and write music and what better place to do it from on a boat you know and i've got a yeah. got a cool house in cape town and if there's a way that i can Get them both done. It's I'm I'm very seriously considering it. So watch the space. Yes, that's nice. so cool, man. It's like I think it's it's all about finding those kind of like inspirational places. You know what I mean for your mind to kind of go in these cool places and and on a boat. What better place than just having like the ocean and and kind yeah. of sunsets every single night? No, I'm, I mean unbelievable. And you just wake up and you never have. If you have a noisy neighbor, you just go. Oh, sorry, don't dig you. Off I go. If there's yeah. a barking dog somewhere that really annoys you, just get cool. <laughs> I'm going to go there. And uh, that's kind of the idea. And, and I'm not into, I don't need to be doing any stunt sailing or anything like that. I just want to get from island to island and light a fire and write a song, play a guitar before it, before it all implodes, which unfortunately, it really looks like we're moving towards, you know, as a humanity. Yes, man. Wow. It's, it's, yeah. Wow. It's, it is kind of scary in a way, but, but let's, let's hope um, yeah. we can, we can revive it somehow. Um, sorry, but, for that, for that, sorry for that crash ending. Moving along to a little bit of light and hope. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you have a great time on your boat, mate. That's that's okay. yeah. <laughs> well, I'm doing it as a safety mechanism. I want to be out there. I'm yeah. going to watch that mushroom cl cloud from the, from the, the middle of the Indian Ocean. <laughs> yeah. Catch the swell. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, so, but did you, were your folks actually uh, divorced or you just, your dad just kind of like, he, he wasn't, he said he obviously wasn't around, but um, you know, and, and, and did this, like you said, it, it affected you, but like how else did it maybe impact you? And, and were there any like siblings or was it just the, you and your mom? Okay. So my mom was married. Um, she was, she was engaged to, to a mining foreman, which in those days was still a very respectful job. And uh, he had an accident uh, in underground and he, he, he became paraplegic as a result. So my mom being the sweetheart that she is 
decided to go through with the marriage and she married him in hospital. Wow. And wow. Um, yeah, which is both very cool and also quite foolish if you want to enjoy, you know, any of your life, to be honest. And so it's a, it was a massive sacrifice. So she, could, she couldn't have uh, children. <coughs> and, um, and so they adopted my brother, Mark. Um, and 10 years later, after, as you can imagine, a relatively boring life in, in all aspects, uh, she, she really helped. She picked him up and did everything for him, created this big lawnmower company where she did all the lifting. And he was super wealthy. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. <coughs> and um, after 10 years of really just sacrificing to this guy, who really didn't treat her well. And I met him and I could say that he has passed on. God rest his soul. There's no dissing, but it, it, he wasn't, wasn't amazing to her. And so my mom, as most people do quite naturally, you know, do drift. And uh, she met my dad, which was a no-brainer. He was an absolute legend. He was like a boxing champion. And he was a <laughs> proper, proper player. And I could see how he would have swept my mom away. And uh, my mom was a, a good-looking woman as well, still at that time, you know. And so they had an affair in the marriage. And I was the result of the affair. And in those days, if you did commit adultery or ha have an affair, you get to you you are kicked out of the marriage with nothing. So she she got nothing, but she got the step. She got the adopted brother Mark, and um and he left and he left it no money whatsoever. And my dad, being the bugger that he was, <coughs> also had multiple affairs going on, <laughs> which my <laughs> which my mom wasn't happy with at all, and she would have no part of it. So she literally, I think, a year or two of trying to make it work with my dad while I was around. She, got, she was over it and she made the call. She was like, that's it. I'm going to raise this child by myself. I don't know most, I don't know the exact details, but I, I know that he was probably, there was a whole nother family that he was kind of with already mm. when he had, when he had um, been with my mother. So in hindsight, I think a fantastic call on my mom's part uh, to keep me away from it. And then what happened further down the line is after, like one day when I go back to Johannesburg, kind of in, in Rand Park, end of Rand Park, that question went from, who's that guy? with, you know, playing ball with the younger kids. And I was just like, mom, who, who is that guy? My, my guy of those guys. <laughs> who's that tall guy, my guy? Is he even tall? Is he alive? And she was like, oh yeah, here's his number. I was like, you, you are, you are, what are you, what? <laughs> <laughs> wow, dumbstruck, man. Yeah, she's yeah. like, here's his number. I was like, you're kidding me. I've been no telling way. people he's dead. <laughs> not, not, for, not for a long time. Though. I think this is literally a pre-primary, like little memory that I have, you know? <laughs> I was like, what? He's got it. How can he have a number? He's in heaven. Um, <laughs> so, so I just called him up. And uh, I was like 16, 17, I think, 17. I called him up and I said, hey, yep, dad, it's me, Art. And he was like, oh, oh. freaked out. <laughs> Pay phone. He's like, oh, I can't believe it. I was like, maybe we should meet. And he was like, yes, definitely we should meet. So that was in Joburg. And um, we said, okay, we're going to meet next weekend at the Hyperama entrance one. And 10 o'clock, I was like, okay, Kev, that's it. That's, I mean, those days, that's how you had to make arrangements. And there were no calendar reminders with push notification. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and so I went to the Hyperama, 10 o'clock. Mom couldn't deal with it. She went around the corner, went and did some shopping. And I was like, I just guess I'm looking for an old dude. He's looking for a young dude. <laughs> he didn't tell me what it is. <laughs> it's actually quite scary in this day and age that that, that was a thing because anything else could have happened, right? Uh, and... Um, and shit, I was there at 10 o'clock, 10.30, 11 o'clock. I was like, ah, oh, bugger. But again, I, there was, I had no anger in me. I, there was nothing. I wasn't, I don't know what it was. I don't know if it's, I don't know if there's levels of, of, um, I don't know. I, I don't know what it was, but I didn't feel anything untowards. I was like, curse you, dad. You left me alone at the hyper market. Wow. My knees like, yeah. It's like, okay, give. So I went back. <laughs> I went back. Now, dad, like, bro, what's up, bro? I was at the, I was at the entrance. And he was like, what do, what do you mean? What, you said entrance two. I was like, no, I said entrance one. He's like, ah. Oh, He'd been standing at the entrance literally around the corner as passionately as I had. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he was like, I promise you I was there. I was at this entrance. There was the thing. I was like, I know where that one is, but that's not where we said. Anyway, so Kev, I said, let's, <laughs> let's try again. So I said, why don't we, why don't we find it? Why don't we actually make a place like a, like a coffee shop or something? And he's like, brilliant idea, son. I was like, okay, <laughs> that's, great. that's a great idea. <laughs> and uh, so it was the next one. Next time we met in Northgate, and um, it was a little bit easier. There was just a lowly old guy sitting at one of the tables, and I walked up to him. We both just stood up and just started sobbing uncontrollably. It was no just ways. the most beautiful, mm. natural, easy thing. And we just hugged and sobbed and hugged and sobbed some more and hugged and sobbed. Exactly. And, and it was just beautiful. And um, so we, we started a connection 
from there. First of all, I milked, I milked quite a few of the missed birthday presents from him. I made him buy me a, a drum kit because <laughs> 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 I was studying drums, which he did gladly, and he was a legend. And then we got to hang out, hang out you know, subsequently and, and spoke a lot of just, just about where he was at and where my mom was at. And, 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 and in all of it, I was just like, yeah, that's, that's just how it is. That's what the situation was. It wasn't great. You were wrong. She was probably a bit wrong here and there. Who knows? Like talking about it really not gonna, it's really not going to help us get to our next Brandy and Coke. So why don't we, why don't we speak to the waiter? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so we had, so we had, a, you know, we had a bunch of cool time. I got to play golf with him. He's an, he's a, he's a, Absolutely incredible player from the bunker. I've, I've saw, I've saw him hold like three or four bunker shots, which killed me because I've still never no done that in my life. Yeah. <laughs> and um, we just had a cool, <clears throat> unashamed, proper love affair with each other. And then when I moved to the states, we used to we used to like look at each other in the eyes with tears and go, "Dad, you know I love you, right?" Because uh, you know I love you. I'm like, no, uh -huh. Dad, I, 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 I love you. And it didn't matter where we were, crowded airport, crowded family gathering, crowded anything. And the tears were just streaming both of us. Like, you know I love you. It's like, yes, of course I know I love you. And, I, and that was the last thing I said to him when I, when I found out that he passed away when I was in New York. So I had proper peace about all of it. <clears throat> you know what I mean? So there was just, there's nothing like, oh, I wish I had of, like, no, I, it was, we, we said, we forgave each other in an instant and we confessed <laughs> our love over and over again, something that most people who have been brought up with very caring fathers would die. Do you know what I mean? Like wondering if, wondering more about if, if they'd said mm -hmm. what, what, whatever. Do you know what I mean? Yes, yeah. bud. Wow. Oh, that's yeah. uh, such a, such a human, beautiful story, man. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, sure. At 17 though, that's like a real young, tender age really to, to but late. have this peace <laughs> of mind to be like, I'm going to go and do this and call him up. Were you, how were you feeling? Were you super nervous? Were you? Actually, I think what, what happened is, um, I remember Glenn Thompson and, and um, oh, was it Ian? Oh, these beautiful boys. That we, we, we were a little bit of a naughty crew. I think we bunked, we bunked school one day. Probably got stoned. I think we were trying to get into weed at that stage. I'm not too sure. Um, <clears throat> I really can't remember. So we may have been stoned or may have not been. And I remember uh, may have us <laughs> being on a mission. Glenn was like, that's it. We're walking now. We're going to go and find your father. I was like, okay. It was wow. Joburg. Like, but where, which way do you want to? Because we used to hitch everywhere. <laughs> and I was like, was a, you want to walk and you're going to look at, you don't know what he looks like. I don't know nice. what he looks like. But we're going to go and find, it was one of those missions. So <clears throat> it's likely that there was some green involved. <laughs> and then I, and I was like, I was like, hang on. I've got, I've got, a, I've got a clue. What if I ask my mom where he might be? And they were like, yes, that's genius. <laughs> so I was like, mom, where's dad? She's like, he has his number. I was like, oh. <laughs> no way. They've taken all the walking out of it. <laughs> no, oh, <man. laughs> so, 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 but I mean, it sounds like there wasn't mm. too, well, there was reconciliation, but there wasn't almost anything to sort out, like in terms of you and your dad. Was it all like that? And then what was your mom's kind of reaction to this new relationship forming? Uh, no, she was, she was supportive of it, but she wanted nothing to do because he was still with the family that he had on the side which caused her obviously immense pain <clears throat> do you know what i mean <clears throat> that's her stuff mm -hmm. so she was happy that i had the relationship but she wanted nothing to do with integrating anything like that so mm -hmm. she was she was very brave um to be part of as much of it as she did to be honest because there was a lot of there was a lot of trauma around around that her reasoning for for, for running away from me which i still haven't ever asked all the full details but i, I probably could mm -hmm. Just not something that interests me, to be honest. But I know that he was, I know that he was probably not good to her at that time or, and whatever it was. And I just decided that I didn't want any of that to affect my current time and experience with him uh, then. So, yeah, so she was cool. And we were, yeah. We were, and also, it wasn't, I mean, I, I didn't see him all the time. I saw him, I think on average, it would become like once a month sometimes. And I, I, there was probably a little period where it was less than that. Or, but it was never forced or there was never any issues. We, we, we probably had one or two little crying moments. I was like, dad, also, what the fuck is my name? What, what is odd? Seriously. Are you, I mean, are, are you, are you a crackhead? And, uh, <laughs> what did he say? So the story is, <laughs> so he said, well, son. So actually the story, there's two sides of the story. One is my mom. <laughs> Always loved the art Blakeys and the art golf uncles and the art, the name art. And because uh, my mom was, it, it was quite a traumatic birth. Like her, her left lung collapsed, but she did smoke all the way up to my pregnancy in those days that people didn't really know that it was not a good thing. 
which is why I'm now three foot eight today, which is cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, so, so my mom was like pretty ill in hospital and my dad being Afrikaans, he actually spoke pretty good English, but maybe, maybe it developed later. She, she, she swears she told him to go and register me as Art, A-R-T. Oh. And, uh, and, he, and he came back and he was like, look, I've registered as ARD. And she's like, oh, no oh, ways. Fuck. <laughs> so <laughs> you can just imagine. I don't know who it is. Excellent. I don't know oh. who did what and, 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 and whether it was on purpose or not. Because I, I did also go, I had a little moment at the bar. I was like, dad, what the fuck is ARD? What is it really? <laughs> Thank you. I mean, it's the most unique name. It took me years to even own it. Eh? Like I, I didn't call myself ARD until I was 30, late, like early 30s, I think. I no refused. ways. Yeah, I hated it. Absolutely hated it. Now, what did I think you call yourself? Just art. I did go ART. I, oh, went with art. My, I went with my mom's, mainly because it was a lot easier to explain to people. And yes. I was living in America at the time where we say art. Oh, they go, oh, is it odd? Like O-D-D? I'm like, uh, no, it's, <laughs> art. It's, it's like, it's fucking odd, but it's A-R-T. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> classic. Yeah. But I can just imagine some of the conversations you must have had with your dad, though. Like, I mean, there must be so many things you want to know. Like, you know, what do you do? Who are you? You know what yeah. I mean? I don't know. It wasn't as inquiring as people make out, or maybe maybe as, as it should have been. We just it was a it was a human level from the word go. Cool. There wasn't anything I, want, I wanted to inquire about what he did with his childhood, and kind of kind of heard a couple of stories about his brothers that he had, and and um, kind of, but never really, I've never really been a big inquirer to, to be honest. Like in that regard, like it's actually it's it's semi odd. <laughs> not, <laughs> not it's it's odd. <laughs> <laughs> And um, <clears throat> so I don't know, like I, I, I have very recollection about his side of the family as well. I think he mentioned his father's name to me once. I wouldn't remember. So I'm not really big when it comes to family tree stuff. Perhaps I should look into it. Hasn't, hasn't compelled me to yet. All I cared about was him. All, that's all yeah. I cared about. I was like, dude, you cool. Let's go and play golf. And, and we, he had such a personality. He, he used to play piano and organ at the same time at the jaws and he used to play in, and his hands are so arthritic because he used to be a boxer, and, but he just used to hoy and he used to play. He was such an entertainer. My mom's wow. also a really, really good natural ear piano player and singer and songwriter. She's really good. But my dad had like the charisma of the showmanship stuff, you know? So we used to get jaws and he used to kill me at pool. Kill me. I don't know if it was home rules or whatever, or because it was a home table, but he was so good. He was, it was actually annoyingly good. And this old buddy just cruising around, just getting those angles in you. Like, that's impossible. I grew up playing pool on the bluff without you because I didn't have a dad. <laughs> <laughs> how is it possible yeah. how is it possible that my gene has not been transferred <laughs> wow. did, have you, did it ever like cross your mind to maybe do any music or, or create any music with your mom or, or maybe your, your dad um, or, yeah. I've, I have actually recorded um, some of her songs wow. okay. but not, not collab as such she came up with some really cool stuff and I think, my, I, think I may have sung along on one of the choruses um, but it's been so feverish trying to do my own stuff that mm that I haven't really had that much time and I've done a lot if that makes sense like I do a lot I'm, 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 I don't feel too compelled to also have to help a parent with a musical career as well you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so I, I encourage it and um and and when I can and if I can and hopefully I will still because she, uh, mom's still full of full of life she's um she's she wrote the song the other day she sent me here check out these lyrics tell me that's not amazing I was like actually they really are but wow. I'm not going to be able to do anything with it right now. Uh, so. Good luck <laughs> but, with it. Uh, yeah, okay, off you go. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a software called Logic. It's got 50, 50 gigs of sound in it, and it should take you a couple of months to find the on switch. So just talking about like, you know, relationships and, and these kind of things, do you, do you think it's like a good idea for, for other people to – if they have an opportunity to heal or mend sort of or forgive others, you, I mean, judging by your story, it sounds like a really good idea to try and patch things up or maybe not patch things up, but, um, you know, reconcile relationships with people. Yeah. I think past. I do often, <clears throat> I, I do encourage people, but you know, everyone's story is different. Some people hold on to things for so many different reasons that I didn't probably wasn't even aware of, of. So I get it that it's, it's difficult and different mainly for everyone. But I think in general, if you can, if you can really just adopt the idea that this very present moment is really all that exists, it's hard though. Cause it's a, it's a work in progress. I mean, you, 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 you try and apply that for every day and you fail. I fail all the time. I get, I get sucked into my future. I get, 
I get, I get, I mean, uh, into my past, I get, you know, haunted by my past, think of it, worry about the future, anxiety, all, all the usual things. So that, that afflicts everyone. But if you can really try and be present and live in the moment, then what, well, then really, what does the past have to do with that person, whoever you're with? And yeah. <clears throat> also that it's that same one, man, when they die and they will die, what was the last thing you said to them? And I've heard so many people go, Oh my God, we had a fight and he died or yes. she died. Well, you know, that's, that's our fortune, man. So, so just go, I love you. Even if inside you go, you're, you're a bitch today. <laughs> just go, I love you. You can still have altercations. You don't have to be a Buddha about it. I mean, you don't have to, you know, you can, it's still human. It's still real. There's still emotions. People do still get offended. I don't understand why so easily the world gets so offended these days. Wow. We are living in the most offended time of our life. It's actually yeah. not normal, but I am, I'm uh, going off topic a little bit there, but it's, it's, it is that you only, you can choose to be offended by anyone, a mother or a father or, yeah. or a best friend. At the end of the day, they there for a short while. And if you need to draw boundaries and move on and say, listen, we can't hang out anymore, but know that I love you. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm not saying you also have to long suffer. Even, yeah. even, even parents, you don't have to like, you see people going so fighting so hard to long suffer with parents. If they, if they bring you down and if it's a low vibration, I'm of the belief that you can just go, Hey, I will always love you. And if you reach out to me on any kind of human level, which I'm, then I'm always there, but for now it's not serving me well. It's not serving my energy well. And if you listen to, to some of the people who've, who've lived to past a hundred, a very common thread that you will find <clears throat> when they ask them, what's your elixir? What's your secret? They go, well, I just didn't associate with negative people. So you should Google it. Google it. People have lived over a hundred and you will find the common thing is that they don't associate. And that includes family, includes friends. So if someone's, if someone's you know, taking your energy away, mother or father, sister or brother, just say love from your side, but you don't have to, you don't have to, you know, you don't have to continue just because they're blood or even friends. I mean, I've had a lot of friends. I've just had to go, God, bro, I love you. But when you get drunk, you're the worst drunk I've ever seen in my life. And, and I can't do it. And quite a lot of them have, um, completely stop drinking and we hang out or whatever or or they you know they've taken that to and it's never like a it's never final nothing's ever permanent mm. um but yeah it's about having boundaries and things like that i reckon yeah it's great yeah. advice well it's great advice but like such awesome lessons there and it's it's not it's like just awesome hearing this kind of like esoteric side to to a guy like yourself it's really <laughs> it's really but it is really cool you know i think it's important i think especially in this day and age like it's it's important for youngsters especially guys as well to understand that actually it's good to to talk about these sort of things you know what i mean like rather than like macho stuff or whatever the story is yeah i think i think there's a nice there's a, there's a very cool little lean towards um authenticity you know and and people wanting to be real that whole that whole outward bravado thing trying to be cool there are a lot of people still doing it and probably always will but it, i just i always see those people going that's where they are in their progression of and I say enlightenment, it's been so, it's, been, it's such a wrong word, but it's like, that's where they are. In, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's where they yeah. are on their path. They're feeling the need to be seen a certain way. Whereas, um, <clears throat> you know, it's just different parts of, of, your, of your journey. So again, you can't be offended by those people. You can't go, they're assholes because they decide to put glowing lights under their cars. Like, Kev, bro, that's, that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's where you're at. Put the wing up. on the back. Yeah, okay. and, and wearing, <laughs> wearing, wearing, wearing stuff and labels because because you think it's going to have any effect on anything. Um, it's all, I, I just see it as part of everyone's journey. I'm like, sure, it's going to, I look forward to being mm. there when you, when you realize that's, that that's not the most important yeah. thing in life, you know? Yeah, so uh, not that I know what the most important thing in life is, but because <laughs> that's also part of my journey. I'm also busy figuring that out, you know? Yeah, for sure, but yeah, for sure. I oh, mean, I really love that. Um, and just going, I guess, well, the, the start of your musical journey, I'm, I'm sure it was when you were young, like you said, your mom was, your dad was obviously in the blood. Um, and you started playing, if, uh, if I'm right, in like a death metal Christian band when you were young. Yeah, so the, <laughs> I guess a kind of only downside, and I say this with love, about growing up in a single parent environment is that you, get, you, can, you can get forced to do things or be semi-indoctrinated a little bit easier because you don't have it's one person's opinion so my mom had a very big um spiritual kind of awakening in her mid-30s or something like that and she found jesus in a very 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 big and real way which i'll mm -hmm. never deny she did unfortunately she imposed it on me my whole life um mm -hmm. and um and from the from the day that i was able to not have to go to church three times a week i never went back again mm -hmm. but <clears throat> but before that 
I was, I was part of the Raymov crew and in Joburg and, wow. and I met two other kids who were also under the same indoctrination. <laughs> I'm saying that I say it with love. I have no Where's problem. Where's the velvet, uh, the velvet bag that has to go around twice. That's what we're <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have no problem with anyone who has faith and energies and spirituality. Just don't, I just don't like it when it's imposed on people for, for too much, um, for too long or, <laughs> or at all, actually. So we were, we, <laughs> so we were, so we were two, we were, we were three um, kids growing up under this crazy, super right wing Christian. I mean, we, and we're teenagers, man. We're like rebellious. All, all we wanted to do was burn stuff, break stuff, and swear. You know what I mean? Like, that's really what we wanted to do, but we weren't allowed to do either. Um, so I remember, I remember us. We used to be really bummed when one, like one of us said shit or fuck. I was like, what? No, you can't. You're going to burn. Oh, oh no. Oh, okay. Phew. Well, that was lucky. It's obviously because we in, were inside. <laughs> Same. <laughs> so that was the band with the three, three super rebellious Christian boys. Really, and I'm, and I'm dear friends with both of them still. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, one has kind of seen the light a little bit and the other is maybe also seen his own kind of light. So who am I to say? Um, but we, but we, we decided to, we decided to start a band that had, um, that delivered a message of hope that have a message of hope delivered on a plate of rage. <laughs> and, <that> was, <laughs> and they were, they were, they, that long hand, Bruce was getting to bass guitar and, and Brad was playing the crew easiest fastest chainsaw guitaring stuff wow. and bruce bruce had the pseudo character that was just like rah, 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 the <laughs> i was like that's hectic but i don't really like that music but uh, but yeah sure man let's kill and he's like we need a drummer i was like uh oh, show me what show me what needs to be done and, and he was like tuka, 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 rah, rah. i was like okay that looks it's pretty that looks pretty easy man let's let's do it and uh and literally it didn't take long <clears throat> and i i was a skinhead then not for any reason, no political vibe. It was just so it was the cheapest way to have a haircut. Um, yeah, and so, and we, so we were called Abhorrence. And you can, I think you can actually find, I think you can find, I don't even know what it's called. Oof, we're going to have to maybe put in the, in the footers or something like that. I'll try and get the yeah. link, the link up. But the, uh, the, the track does exist on, no on, on YouTube somewhere. Yeah. What is it called? Cool. Bruce is going to kill me for forgetting. I'll have to text him. Um, <laughs> But it's just it's like a ten minute thing of me playing double bass, and then in those days it was all tape recording. So we'd get through like the end of the craziest rift at the end of nine minutes, and I hit slightly the rim. Oh, like, start again! It. Start again! I was like, oh, <laughs> oh, oh my god! Oh. Oh, and where is all god. the where is all this going anyway? The guy, the guy, typical studio owner, took all the tapes, did all the stuff. We didn't get any deal. He released it, made all the money. I mean, that was just the very first time I got shocked. <laughs> I, oh, yes. I should have, I should have known then. That should have been an indication. But yeah, so that was that was my little foray into death metal. So that implies people were listening to it. Yeah, exactly. Well, no, we 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 did a lot of big clubs um, when the doors were still around, and we, we we had quite a cool little underground following. But you know, it was this was pre Instagram. Or pre Facebook, so it was literally word of mouth and people who, yeah. and, and the people who really do like that music in Johannesburg, it's, I mean, it's still not big. <laughs> not, even if you had a big Instagram following at the time, you're still only going to get a couple hundred at best, you know? Yeah. I certainly won't be there, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, classic, man. So, and then um, after school, um, you decided to move to the UK, I think, to scope things out. What sort of prompted that move? No, well, after school, I studied drums. I, okay. did, a, I did the PIT curriculum, uh, which was uh, Musicians Institute. Uh, equi- well, it was. It was the MI syllabus in Los Angeles. And we had, we had the first accredited teacher come through. Mr. Andre Luke, God bless him. Love, love him. Love you, Andre. He taught me so many things. Not only drums, but there were a lot of, just a lot of life lessons. <clears throat> um, and so I did this course. It was a one-year intense four-hour theory in the morning and then six-hour practice at night. It was a proper drum course. And what? it wasn't so hard. It was proper, proper. Very, very tough curriculum, but it taught me everything I know about rhythm in music, which I have later gone on to be super grateful for because it's not, I've never pondered that or I never, I never get confused by rhythm because I know it pretty well. At, at one stage, I would have been able to notate the drum kit if you had thrown it down a flight of stairs i would have been able to write out what the notes meant <laughs> on paper you know I haven't done that for 20 odd years so, so um <clears throat> so yeah so i studied drums i didn't realize that i wasn't making any money south african drummers don't make a lot of money sorry they really don't they yeah you have to have an exceptional career for that um 
So I actually started playing like a one man band thing. I saw there was a mate playing down the road from me at Chillers in Randburg. Um, he was making 500 Rand a night. He was playing bass with his feet and he was singing covers on a guitar. And I was like, that's true. I've never heard of that much money in my whole life. I, I, what, is that, what does that even mean? Yeah. What, what do you do? What, like what comes after two, two zero? Surely that's the end of, of finance, right? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop learning to play guitar. And uh, so I did. <clears throat> and um, yeah, I started doing a couple of covers. Got a lucky break at the, at the, the Black Steer restaurant that I was working at. Uh, mm-hmm. Literally knew one song and my mates egged me on. They were like, go and play your, go and play your song that you, we've heard that you can play. I was like, no, oh, because the musician had a little break, right? And, and so they said, go and play, go and do it. So I was like, fuck it. I went and played, did the song and I got, I got off stage and the manager was like, you, Wednesday, 200 rand a night, three sets huh. next Wednesday. I was like, wow. Okay, cool. Wow. I, knew, I knew one song, one song on guitar. So uh, it was um, one of those moments where you don't go, oh, you know, I only know one guitar I play. I just, I was like, yes, I am your man. I'll do it. 200 <laughs> rand. <laughs> wealth. I'll earn it. Exactly, wealth. I'll, I'll only never have to work again. Yes, two gigs right. and I'm out of here, guys. I'm, I'm buying boat. drinks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that was a crazy week. I went back to mum down the road. I was like, oh, so I got a gig. It's like 200 rand. A Wednesday, she was like, what? She was also like, that's ridiculous. Um, so we had a very stretched tape recorder. Very stretched. <laughs> well, on the tape recorder, the tapes were stretched. But it was a super old, one of those old ones that flipped up like that. Literally just a little square guy. And I was like, shit, okay. Fuck, well, I've got to learn more songs now. I mean, I literally knew Cat Stevens. That was my song. <laughs> I knew a Cat Stevens song. Not well. Nice. So I went back to Mama. We just, we just started hitting. I just started trying to... Try, we didn't have Google. We didn't have anyone. I had no one there. No one to teach us. I had to do it by ear. Fortunately, I had her wow. ear as well. <clears throat> now, you must remember, though, that all the tapes are super stretched. And so as the tapes get stretched, their key goes completely different. <laughs> so, 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 yeah, I was learning keys that, that it wasn't even the original keys. They were all like, they were all flats. Do you know what I mean? Because the tapes had been, <laughs> I was like, why? It was a really sad that? set that you were going to play. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and why is everything, like, like, why is everything in like these flat keys? Anyway, um, <laughs> Bro, so I managed, and it was in the 90s, so every song sounded, I was like, okay, well, that's fine. I could, I'm pretty sure I know what he's saying there. Uh, all phonetically drawn out with hieroglyphics and pictures and, and like stars and things like that. And that was how I transcribed the first songs, you know? Um, and I went, yeah, so long story short, I went and did that gig the next week with 10 songs, played them far too fast, but, but they, they seemed very happy and said, just play it on repeat until you finish the work. Um, so they loved it. And then I managed to gather that, uh, it was then that I broke up with my girlfriend, got super heartbro- uh, heartbroken because of it, because I broke up with her. <laughs> Very <laughs> silly. I think, <laughs> I think, um, I think it was just the pace that she moved on. That really, that really bugged me. She like a week later with some dodgy nightclub owner. I was like, yes. come on, come on. Oh, when I break uh, up with someone, I want you to be sad for a while. I want you, yeah, I want you. I want, <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. You are first everything. Can you at least show something? But anyway, uh, so God bless her. You know, she uh, at that time I thought that was very shallow. So I wrote shallow waters. Obviously, had no uh-huh. idea what what shallow would mean. Um, I was I was then I was so bummed. I fled to London. Ah, uh-huh. fled in with heartbreak with no visa. So I couldn't get a job. Ah, uh, no way. <laughs> yeah, I walked into the bar. I was like, hey, man, I'm your guy. Look at this. Look at this beautiful face. I'm, I'm, I'm your personality. I'm the character that you need for your bar. And they were like, absolutely, bro. Just get us your work visa and let's go. I was like, okay. Oh, uh-huh. Visa thing. Right. So I ended up picking letters in Chichester on the side. <laughs> it was the only thing I could do that was undercover. And it was run by South Africans, obviously. Nice. <laughs> they were paying you 20 rand a day. Bro, I was getting... <laughs> 60 pounds for a six day week of 16 hour work. It was, it was absolutely, it was horrendous. So I only did that for two or three weeks. And then, uh, and then I was like, no, 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 no. I've got to go. I've got to find another way to do it. So I called my mate, Bruce, who was my bass guitarist in that, in Abhorrence. <clears throat> he was in London, busy just forging his way. He had a little apartment. I was like, Bruce, you've got to find a way for us to buy two battery powered amps. And we've got to come, I'm going to come busk. <laughs> Let's busk. He was like, that sounds good. Cause he, he he had always been a drummer originally, and then he did bass to be in the band. And he's like, "Cool, I'll, I'll play djembe." So he like he sat down yeah. on 
he sat down on the one battery powered amp that my guitar was plugged into. And then I sat onto the amp and I had a coat hanger folded around my neck that could hold a, a mic. <laughs> <laughs> so we sat down in the middle of Leicester Square. She said, then we were earning 60 pounds a night, if not more sometimes. Wow. But yeah, wow. it was amazing. So we were like, Jesus. And we got photos. We had like hundreds of people around us. Wow. Um, and then we just used to stop and move there and have a, so it was a night. Never mind the life that we led in the summer and the people we met. And it was just, it was, it was really quite special. Um, so we were like, let's take this thing professionally to South Africa. Let's, let's, and uh, let's go and play at the bars there. You get a drum kit. And I was like, okay, I'll find bass pedals and learn how to play the bass with my feet. And so we took that, that project to um, <clears throat> back to South Africa. And we're like, what's, who's your favorite musician? And he was like, mine is Dennis Chambers, which is one of the greatest drummers. We love him. <clears throat> I also knew him, obviously, because I'd studied all the courses. So he said, my favorite drummer is Dennis Chambers. And I was like, my favorite music is Cat Stevens. So we're like, ah, why don't we call it Cat Chambers? I'm like, okay. Cat. <laughs> <laughs> original, <laughs> but Original. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We just merged the two and no one will ever pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> mine <laughs> equals balloon. <laughs> oh, bro. We, we, had a, we came up with an even worse name later when it, when it came to Just Ginger, but I'll get to that now. Yeah. <laughs> So we started doing gigs at the waterfront, uh, just the two of us. Got a cool little following going, got quite busy, like four or five nights a week, which was cool. Making the, five, the elusive 500 rand or 600, sometimes we were really good. We were like, hey, this is an 800 rand a night act. Yes. Don't you, don't you mess around. Covers, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, with, uh, oh, with yeah. like shallow waters and maybe yeah. one other original thrown in, oh. but like all covers. Counting crows. Yeah, lots of kind yes. of crows, lots of Led Creed Zeppelin. with that voice you did a moment ago. <laughs> I, oh, no, I actually never did Creed. I never liked him. Oh I, so I, I refused to. Um, <laughs> what was the place at, at, at the waterfront? It wasn't Cats Fantastic. There was another place where all, like, all the kids went. Uh, uh, yes. it was, there was Mor Morgan's Jake? Cat? Morgan's Cat. That was yeah. Morgan's Cat. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was a great place. And <laughs> there was also, yeah, there was, there was another, I forget. But anyway, so we, we played. And on the same night that we were playing was this band called Tri-Funk Era playing three shops down the road and bruce in, in our break we used to go and watch and they had this drummer playing who was singing as well with this colored bass guitarist and this and 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 uh, this blonde guitarist and we i used to go and go what the fuck is that that's ridiculous <laughs> i couldn't believe what he was doing he had a 28 pack he was singing better than anyone i'd ever heard in my life playing drums better than I just finished my degree. And I was like, I, 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 that's, I, no, can't, I can't do any of that. That's nuts. Hmm. He was playing his ass off. Anyway, so that band in their break used to come and watch our little, little duo. No way. And, um, and I was playing Shallow Waters at the time. And I just remember Brent being himself, who's, um, who's the, the ginger drummer and still my dearest friend. I'm the godfather to his son and stuff like that. You know, he just, I remember this was 25 years ago. It must be. Yeah, 25 years ago. He just walked in, sat down. <laughs> He's such a big character. And he was so, so just, he was just hard to explain how, how damn cool he was. And still is, obviously. Um, <clears throat> sat down, watched the, watched the band, went. And I was like, oh, yeah, Kef, I feel, okay, cool. And we'll see you guys tomorrow. We're playing again. I went back to the, where I was working. And the cell phones had just come out. They had like 15-minute talk time, like if that. Or 15-minute standby <laughs> time. <laughs> <laughs> and he called me. He's like, dude, um, you're going to sing in our band. I, I want to do original music. And I was like, hi, sorry, who is this? <laughs> it's, Brent. it's Brent, you're singing in our band. We want to do original music. And I was like, yeah, yes. I mean, I, no, I mean, let me think, of, what? Let me think about it. It was an immediate yes, but I had, I had a little thing, which was is that I had um, a little problem is that I had Bruce, you know, in, in, my, in, my, in the band. I was like, yeah, so what do I do? Fortunately, actually, and this is genuine, and Bruce, if you're listening, you can concur. I'll text you just now. This is the story that I remember. <laughs> it was 25 years ago. Um, <laughs> Um, no, Bruce, Bruce had, had met and fallen in love with this Californian girl and they were talking about kind of relocating to California, which he actually ended up doing. And so I was like, okay, that's how we did that transition. Bruce is still in America to this day. Cool. Um, and I was like, okay, well, it looks like this can work out. And I was like, okay, Brent, I'll be the singer, but geez, when are you sure you're going to get this fat gaff tooth dude with dreadlocks instead of you, can't you go and sing and I'll try and play drums. Um, <laughs> anyway, he had massive, he had massive belief in me doing that. And that was, that wow. was pretty, those were the original members of just ginger, but they were called tri-funk era at the ah, time. Cool. 
And we were yeah. like, even even with our very moderate maths, we understood that that was not correct with four of us being on stage. You're just you playing around musician. with people. <laughs> yeah. Like, what does this mean? Why are there four of them in this trial era? What are they doing? They're so progressive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's so, awesome, man. <laughs> so we, so we we're like, we're gonna have to drop the try, guys. You do understand that they were like, everyone was like, why? I was like, man, come on. <laughs> I'm joking. They didn't say why, but I mean, it was. <laughs> so we just dropped the try. We became funk era for a while, and then we realized that we want to, um, that we that this was now the start of a band that's gonna kick ass. We had that feeling. We knew it. We just knew that the elements in that band were gonna be strong enough to, to make a bit of noise. You know, that's cool, eh? naively. Yes kind of naively and yet i guess with with the correct foresight you know the so what is this 96 <sighs> yeah that'll be 96 maybe in a 95 but 96 yeah yeah yes yeah so we uh so we were playing a lot at roxy rhythm bar in town and and we we we, we just asked the the fans to put names in a box for the band and we were just being so childish man we were such we were really innocent <laughs> rock stars believe it or not to to this day uh, regardless of all the reputations that precede us, um, we were so innocent. And like, so we were probably drinking a bit, but it wasn't a druggy situation or anything like that. But we used to be goofy drinkers and goofy drunks. And I mean, I've still to this day never been in a fight in my life. I've never hit anyone or been hit. Touch wood. Don't take that as a challenge anymore. Anyway. Very unrock star of you. It's so unrock and roll. It's so unbluff. It's so everything. But I've never, I've, I've, I've just never, never, yeah. never broken like a guitar in anyone's head or. No, I may have, I think I, I, I think I do remember smashing a guitar against the wall with my. I think it could have been that uh, a girlfriend. <laughs> I hope I hope it wasn't, but it was it was just a frustration. With obviously never towards anyone. I, I couldn't dream of that. Um, so we decided to put some names in a hat. And we were just like goofy at the end of the night. We we're like, just like, you know, just, I don't know. It's, it's, a, it's hard to explain what kind of euphoria, you know, euphoria you're in at the end of a Kiff show and, and just hanging out, packing the van. And, and we had a, a, our goofy friend, Glenn again was there that I mentioned earlier. He was the guy who was like, let's go find your dad. Glenn Thompson made a, <laughs> you know, he's, he's still my dear friend. I love him. <clears throat> but he was there. He was like a roadie. And he, he smoked a lot of weed and forgot everything always. And, um, and so he was the worst roadie ever. Love you, Glenn. It's true. Let's be honest. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and we used to come up with like stupid, like goofy sayings that no one understood, including <laughs> ourselves, but we thought it was funny. We like, everything's like, everything's just gouda. Everything's just dandy. Everything's just kip. <laughs> and then, and then like, I think the word, yeah. somehow the word ginger, ginger just flipped in. We're like, oh, everything's just ginger. It's like, well, what does that mean? It's like, it means everything's cool. Everything's just ginger. I was like, no, but to who? No one. It's just us. And we're being idiots. <laughs> <laughs> we're being idiots right now. And we're like, ah, oh, but let's be clever and let's change the spelling. And then it, then it was completely original. And I'm like, okay. Little did we know. <laughs> little did we know that J-I-N-G-E-R to, you know, read to, to even a very moderate, moderately lit literate person. <laughs> It's 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 jinga <laughs> to anyone. <laughs> it's basically finger with a J. Oh, classic, man. <laughs> we didn't think of that. We thought we were being finger with a J. <laughs> yeah, it's literally finger with a J. Oh, we didn't know this. Fortunately, because we had because we had we had the record companies had told the the DJs how to pronounce it. The the country followed suit, and obviously South Africa knows us as just ginger. But as soon as we went to America, they'd be like, welcome on stage, just Jinger. And we're like, oh, oh. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh, You're killing God. us right now. <laughs> so, oh. so we did, we did one, only one thing worse than being having a, a name mispronounced. We changed a brand in the middle of our heyday. We changed wow. the spelling of our brand because we were scared about how people were introdu introducing us on stage. So we changed it to J-I-N-J-E-R so there could be no more confusion. But also what happened is that we lost pretty much everyone. No <laughs> ways, like, really. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, it was we were just it, we were just going into the digital age or the internet age, you know, where people were searching for us, and we had now left to America. Mm. And we were kind of there. We were signed to Capital Records. We weren't in people's faces, so everyone was like, "What's happening? Where is? What's happening to J A N G E R?" And it was just old, old news. Like, shit, what, what's happening with them? It huh. wasn't coming up in the, you know in the search engines. Hmm. Because because you had freaking done the biggest thing, the biggest faux pas you can ever do if you if you yes. any kind of branding or marketing. Let's change the spelling of your freaking brand halfway wow. through halfway through it. So that uh, that did not serve us well. 
um, but it also didn't didn't stop us entirely. You know, we still had a couple of things to say. Yeah, wow, but that's that's crazy, man. <laughs> it's it's it's. it's yeah, it's it's an important. I guess it's an important lesson to learn, but not one you kind of like to look back fondly on. That's no, exactly, uh, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And um, I mean, you guys, like, let's be honest, you guys were iconic, like in South Africa, and like, I guess definitely Maya and Craig's era, like, you know, just mm-hmm. everyone kind of just just loved listening to you. I mean, it was, and you did like incredibly well. Um, you won awards left, right, and center, and you've like competed with, and sorry, not competed, but like. Um, being on stage with you know amazing other bands in the world is there is there any like highlights uh, that kind of like stand out for you with uh, you know just ginger oh bro there's so many highlights but uh but i think um i think an interesting thing that people don't realize is that you do say won many awards and and i, I guess we had a couple of accolades and broke a couple of records but but you know weirdly and it's something that's just happened now um two months ago we um both times that we got nominated for best album of the year we we lost both those nominations even though we had outsold the winning band by a considerable number like like <laughs> i mean <laughs> i think i think the band had sold 2000 and we were sitting on 120000 which was like unbelievable in in south africa mm-hmm. it's 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 still pretty remarkable to do that these days wow. to sell that and uh, so we lost both times to that so it was a bit of a weird industry thing going on there who knows what it was but for a band that had done what we'd done, we didn't get any awards. So we actually, our third album, we did finally win a Sama and it was for album cover. And the guy who did the album cover got the Sama and we never got any award. And that was it. That was our life experience with Samas. Wow. And uh, so needless to say, I'll, I'll be honest, I was slightly bitter for quite a while. So not bitter. It didn't, as you know me, it didn't like hang on me like a monkey. I was just like, nah, that doesn't seem, something doesn't seem right there. That seems a bit off. Like I didn't even really get it to the cap kind of ignored it um, going on. We, I didn't even think we submitted the, the, the rest of the records because we were just like, well, we don't feel like going through that torture huh. again. Uh, and then this last record that I did now, Impossible Machines, my, my dear friend and, and, and co-manager, he was like, dude, we've got to, we've got to submit this to the Simons. I was like, okay, bro, but yeah, I mean, you do it. I don't even know where to start and I, don't, I really don't care. And it's, you know, it's nothing against him at all. As I say, it's just like after that, you're like, I don't know. I don't know, don't know if I feel like doing that again. So they asked if I was going to, so they did submit and I did get nominated. And, um, and they were like, so you're going to be at the event? I was like, no, really, I've actually gone. And very genuinely, I had shows booked on both those nights. And, um, and they, were, they were pretty good shows. And, I, and I'm a homeowner, so I need money. <laughs> I mean, you, can't, you can't give your bank owner the award and ask him to, 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 uh, to drop your bond, you know? <laughs> uh, so, so um yeah so i was on my way to a show and it was a friday night i didn't even i thought the awards were on a saturday and my phone just blew up and all my mates are like bro you won you won the award you won the, the summer so i was like geez like it's actually the first summer in 24 years that i've actually won and most people don't know that um so that was actually quite cool a very cool tip of the cap actually my mom my mom took a photo of it i've been abroad for a few weeks now and my mom was like it's arrived <laughs> i was like yeah but take a cool. photo that's gift yeah so yeah when we played with some cool bands so tons of highlights bro um without sounding too aloof not not hugely ones that stand and i guess that that first u2 thing was amazing being on that stage with them and, and they were pretty cool and and getting to play at all the all the mediva 46664 mm-hmm. um, celebrations and fundraisers I mean, it's, it's epically um you know it's an honor you know so but it's all been it's all been a highlight, <clears throat> and as I say, this most recent one is is cool because I guess it's just a, a bit of a tip of the cap and a testament to to my individual work as an as a as an established artist and songwriter in a solo capacity. So that's been a, that was a very big highlight, even though it's nowhere near as big as a <clears throat> a Grammy or anything like that. But it's a, it's definitely a nice little tip of the cap to get from the country. You know? Yeah, man. But, but, but you, yours is sounding quite humble. I mean, you you also have like both of your first albums were like double platinum yeah. and, and like uh, the best selling rock album of all time, if I'm not wrong. In, I think in at South that Africa. stage it was, we had, we held on quite a while. I'm not too sure if pilot have overtaken that or if or, uh, or whatever, but for many years we, we, it, it was definitely unheard of, you know? It's yeah. amazing, man. Yeah, yeah. it is. But, <laughs> and, and um, I, I always like, I always like think about like how amazing it must be to be on a stage and just to have like this whole crowd of people kind of looking at you, singing back, enjoying themselves. 
I mean, it just must never kind of get old. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, you know, I don't think you can get better job satisfaction, you know, writing a song in, in your room, being vulnerable, um, and then having people go, yeah, that's, you wrote that song for me, and then not one person, but then you get thousands of people singing that word along, those words along to you as though you wrote it for them, which of course you did, but you wrote it for you, and it's, oh, it's just beautiful. Like it, it never gets lost to me. It never gets old. Anytime, anytime anyone takes the time to want to have a selfie or want to want to meet me or something like, I'm like, so I'm like, are you sure? I'm not sure. <laughs> Thank you. That's like the biggest, that's the, no problem ever. People are, don't you get tired of it? I'm like, I really don't. Cause also when I'm at shows, that's my office hours, you know, it's like I'm on stage and I'm public property for a while and I'm super grateful. I'm not going into work with some boss crapping all over me and feeling like yeah. I've under delivered and stuff like that. I'm being agile. And like, I mean, I'm being adored for like two or three hours. Like, that doesn't it get tiring? Like, no. I mean, what kind of sick person must you be to, <laughs> to be annoyed by that? I'm like, thank you. I'll take it, you know? Because yes. when I go home, I go home, to, to, you know, there's like, I have two dogs who, who don't give a fuck and they still, they judge me. <laughs> <laughs> you know? They still poo inside. They still, but yes. they still don't care what award I won. They will crap them up <laughs> right in the front door. And so, <laughs> so it's, it's, um, it's a wonderful leveler and that's, that is my reality. It's, it's, a, very, it's a very enclosed reality with some very important people in my life and that's all it is so it's not this ongoing like and i go i go down for a drink wherever i am locally and it's, it's not a it's not a it's not a um a mission so so at the end of the day it should be nothing but charmed and a blessing that people that people care i'm like sure <laughs> thank you <laughs> cool, man. and art do you do, did you sort of gig with a lot of the other popular bands at the time you know maybe sp- Bring back nude girls, or because it's similar time frames, um, or was it sort of? I mean, does everyone sort of know each other in the industry, that kind of thing? Yeah, um, of course. I mean, I encountered all of them uh, along the way. <clears throat> Remain friends with a lot of them. I, I can't think of any that I that I haven't for any reason. No fallouts, as I say. I haven't I haven't uh, exercised these guns yet. Although maybe <laughs> maybe the next next part of my career will have to get my beat down on. <laughs> <laughs> Take on your dad's boxing skills. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I've got to have something in it. Come, boys. Hopefully, they're better than your pool skills, though. <laughs> yes, I like it. Oh, that was frustrating. Um, so yeah, I'm good friends with all of them. Arno and I actually have a show, like, geez, in Durban on the 11th of August. So we we've done some collabs and and hung out. Cool. And um, yeah, I know I know all the boys. I actually I don't know if anyone remembers a band called Arapaho from Durban, but yeah, they were really they yeah they were cool, man. Like. They were actually really charging the ground before anyone else. Them and Squeal. Oh, they, were, they were doing... Squeal, oh yeah. Do you remember Squeal? Yeah. So Squeal, yeah. I think, just got a little bit a little bit more radio love, which is why. Which is why. But I mean, Arapaho, they, uh, they opened for um, Bon Jovi and they, that was the first like opening, big opening slots that were happening for rock and roll bands. Mm-hmm. And that was then. <clears throat> and so the lead singer is now almost 60. He's almost 60 this year. <laughs> but he's uh-huh. my neighbor. He's my neighbor in Hart Bay. So no I'll, 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 and I, we go for coffee like two or three times a week. He's literally like my closest mate in Hart Bay. So we hang out all the time. We, we have over for dinners. So yeah, it's great. I hang out, I hang out with Arno a lot. Theo, we, I'm going surfing with Theo from, from the new girls. We're going to the Mentawis next month. <laughs> so we uh, like, you know what I mean? So we, um, yeah, I, I would say I've kept a, a healthy, uh, healthy contact with those who've cared to want to be in touch as well. Yeah. You know what I mean? Also some people have just come and gone and, and and totally. being being the band that we are, we've seen a lot of bands come. They had a lot of attitude, and they just just disappeared. I mean, like you know, we kind of sit back and just go, "Yeah, oh, bro, you, I mean, you could have just been cool for a while because it's everything short. You yeah. know, life is short, so be cool totally. while you can." And um, but you know, usually the biggest assholes we met with little young and up and coming bands trying to prove something, and it's understood. Yeah. It's like it's not even they're not even doing it wrong. It's like that's right. You got a lot to prove, bro. I understand why you're being a bit rude at the moment, but in general, those people have passed on and moved on and i've remained friends with some of them i guess I, you know i don't know <laughs> yeah yeah no. i guess it's like i mean being also then when it comes to being in a band it's like you know this is a long-term relationship like how, how do you how do you guys like stay together you know what is has there been like a secret ingredient you know to keep the kind of dynamic going um well we always said we, we always said we said as long as we're having fun then we're doing it because the money came and went mainly to the record companies. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, it's really shocking. Anyway. Um, Did you real, really get sort of what, I mean, we can go there in a second, but yeah. Yeah. No, no, it would just be completely shafted from the record companies from day one. 
So yeah. even even our most recent endeavors in America, yeah, it's uh, it's it, but it's our fault, bro. You got to own your shit. I, I I guess that's one one little thing that I have against not having grown up with a dad because I never had I never had a father figure showing me any business acumen whatsoever. Never had a, you know, I never had a, just that, that other voice going, well, have you had a lawyer look at that? <laughs> you know, mm. which, which probably what a, what a, what a, you know, what a present father would have done. So I, I do regret that sometimes because I've made massively horrific decisions on my own steam, which I, I thought was good, but it was just completely wrong. So mm. that voice of reason. So anyone who's, who's, who's got a father who annoys you with his financial understanding and prowess and, and achievements, just take it, just get off your high yeah. horse. He can help you. He's going to advise you what investments are good and, and, and et cetera. And I, I never had any of that. And it's, that's not a worries me thing because everyone, some of the best entrepreneurs had to learn that from nothing. And I, I just didn't. Um, uh, so it's taken me a while. I'm, I, I'd say I'm much more astute now and things have been really cool lately. Um, owning all my own stuff, but yeah, the record companies <laughs> had a field day with us bro, for sure. Yes. Wow. So, but I, but I, but I'm also through all of that while we're being shafted. That's, <laughs> it's like, we're just like, well, I mean, are we laughing a lot? And the answer has always been yes. And uh, we also, um, we just become brothers on this earth, you know, we're not related, but we are brothers. So Denim Harding is, uh, he, he joined the band literally two years later when our, when our original bass guitarist got ran into some trouble. Um, <clears throat> and we have done nothing but laugh like kooks at the same freaking jokes that get funnier the older they get <laughs> but, so they're cool. ne- but they're never better they're terrible jokes but they now they're now making us like keel over onto the floor because it's so funny <laughs> for some reason so it I must mean, be I've fart had, jokes man surely oh, bro, there's everything and the, and the thing is that the thing that happens is that everything gets worse and worse it's like cabin fever you know so the jokes evolve and they and and then eventually the jokes are so hectic that Absolutely, no one else in the whole world will ever understand that. <laughs> yeah. Three of us. So we have we've gone we've gone along, and it's never it's never like really offensive. I will I can I can testify to that. Like I'll stand by it. But the, it's the joke is so far beyond that anyone who does hear from an outsider either thinks we're completely nuts, which we may have, <laughs> we may have very good grounds to think, but or, or somehow takes offense. So I have seen that happen. So we've had to reel our humor in, you know, in the years and go, guys, not. No one understands that. That's just ridiculous, you know. And we've we've really we've really pushed it to the limits. But that's what happens when you have so much time together, you know, in a van. And this my biggest for the jam room. This is not. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so we've uh, one of my biggest nemesis has been just when touring is being in a car with these bastards. Um, oh, hold on, hold on a second. <laughs> Thanks, darling. You said you were gonna click your fingers, but yeah, oh, yes, yeah I should have. I should have. Just, no, no, no. Uh, um, what was I saying? Yeah, so just getting to um, yeah, just driving to the next show was the biggest. Because as a singer, the only thing you can do to protect your voice is to shut up. There's mm. no, there's no elixir. You can drink, you can drink your vinegar and some honey, and yes, it's, it's maybe it reminds me, it reminds you of your gran or something like that. But that's about the best <laughs> it does. Um, <laughs> it does not help. Um, nothing helps other than shutting up and sleeping. So when you're traveling and and we're all super hungover from the first night, and then you're in hungover humor mode, and the oh, and the, and the other laugh. two are just the other two are on complete fire, and everyone's egging each other on, and it's like you laugh so much, it's like I'm hoarse, I'm completely hoarse by the time <laughs> we get to the next gig. So I remember that being a being a big challenge, but also being like, man, if I'm laughing my way from job to job or show to show, like what at yes. all? I don't know yes. many people who travel like that. You know what I mean? Epic, <clears throat> I really should have a much, I mean, I should have some semblance of a six pack after the amount of laughing I've done in my life, but <laughs> I obviously had a very big layering to begin with. <laughs> oh, uh, you got a great laugh for me. I've had to room. So, so, um, look, uh, Ard, you've also done a number of uh, shows in support of uh, one or another charity. And um, how important is it for us to sort of give back in our lives or in your life? Is it, and, um, yeah, even do you think it's sort of possible for everyone to give back, even if you don't necessarily have like a following or an influence like you do? Yeah, well, I mean, the biggest, the biggest currency and commodity in the world is time. Um, the most valuable, should I say? So even even if you just offer your time and do something, I think everyone should. Uh, I got I got quite um, 
yeah, I just, just I, I had like a bit of an epiphany when I was in LA. I was like, oh, you know, things are going so well. And when I say so well, we're still, we're still hustling for rent every single month that we were in LA. So they weren't going so well. We weren't driving Bentleys. We were like sharing a, a, a polo or something. You know what I mean? But we, we still felt super blessed because we were, we were a South African band in Los Angeles making it, look, making it like surviving month to month. And, um, and I still remember going, man, I've got to, I've got to do something. So I did start, uh, a little charitable thing around that. And, and I've been pretty, pretty proactive. I do still do that all the time. Um, it's just been about being more specific and targeted as to where I spend that energy and time. Because what, what also happens is that the public perceives that you've done really well and that you can just come play here for an hour and it won't, you know, it's, it's just an hour of your time and it's for a good cause. And all, all of a sudden what happens is your inbox just starts going, ah, we would love to have you appear. We've, we've got an NGO and we've got this charity and it's for this cause yeah. and this, but, and they're all real. They're all desperate. They're all, you know, they're all worthy, so to say, yeah. but again, so is rent. Mm, <laughs> so, exactly. You know, so we've, we've really been, we've been through the ringer with that, to be honest, like, um, and in my own capacity, even, you know, people have taken my good nature and really, and they've been quite shocked when, they, when I go, listen, I, I, I can't come for free. I can give you like a discounted rate, but my work is, is my income. And yeah. that's in my charity has to start at home. And I've only, st- I've only very recently started becoming a little bit almost rude to say, but it's always, yeah. it's always done incredibly politely, if that makes sense. But I'm like, I'm so sorry. I know, I know little Johnny needs an operation and I'm desperately sorry for him, but I can't come play for free. I just can't do it. So what I've had to do is I've had to just do my own events. Where I, and also in the past, you, you, I've heard stories where we've done events and we've ended up paying other people's salaries for a few months and it never went to the actual cause, mm-hmm. which is what happens with a lot of these charities. That they have expenses. But I'm like, I'm not going to go there and do a show for you just to pay the staff for four months. You've actually, you have, little Johnny never ended up getting sorted out anyway. Do you know what I mean? So I've had too many, I've had far too many of those um, experiences. Um, not that I don't trust anyone, but it's just the, the easiest way to do it is to just handle it yourself. Mm-hmm. So um, I did an event now and I've, I'm going to start a little series called, um, uh, it was Be Kind to, the Be Kind to series. And it'll, and you could tag that with any city that I'm in. So I started with the Be Kind to Hot Bay. And I went and uh, uh, like just identified what needs to be done. So I've, um, I met up with Frank Solomon and he's running this beautiful life-saving thing on the beach um, under the Ocean Sentinel, something like that. Well, I'll also have to give you the link of that. Um, and they, they, they just seem to be doing a really good thing. Yes, there's a million other things that need to be done. Yeah. There's dog rescues, there's dog shelters and stuff like that. But what, but what do you do? I, I can't do all of them. I decided to do this one because it was, um, it, it, it was something that was visible. People could see the change. It's on, it's on our beach run. It's a beautiful, beautiful beach run. So we managed to get water and, 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 and containers and we man- managed to get some infrastructure and some gear for the lifesavers. So it's, it's something that people can see there's some progress towards. Um, so we gave 25% of the proceeds of that show and it was a, quite a large sum of cash and I managed to auction off a guitar. And that really went somewhere where I knew what to do. And then at the end of the show, I also put up a fully transparent Excel spreadsheet of this is exactly how much I made. This is what it costs me to do a show. This is how much I pay my band members. You know, the, my, my solo band members are, are, are sessions uh, are on a session base. This, mm-hmm. this is what it costs to get sound. <laughs> People think you just bring sound in. It's a hell of an experience. And this is what we raised after I gave, after we gave um, a guitar and, and, and raised money for the guitar. And it was a substantial amount. You can go into my Facebook now and go and check it. You'll have to scroll down to about April. <laughs> yeah, but, it's, but the, the Excel sheet is there. It's fully transparent. And that's how I want to operate um, going forward because, because that way actually something does happen that, be, that can be visible and I can apply that be kind to anywhere. I'll go I'll, I'll, any town that, that needs me to come in. Not that it's a juggernaut massive, you're going to change the world, but it's, mm-hmm. it's uh, th- that kind of charity effort feels more worthwhile to me. Yeah. But, in, and it's, it's also super personal like as well, which is, which is really awesome. So what a great yeah. initiative and, and, and yeah. but, uh, everything counts in this world. Seriously. Like it yeah. doesn't matter what size it is. It's in, and, and you know, even if it's just, no, I'm, I'm not saying just time, but you know what I mean? Even if you go yeah. and you like, say you play music somewhere, you mm. are lifting up someone's spirits mm. you know, for that hour or 30 minutes, or whatever it is. That, that is important stuff to do. You know what I mean? So many, so many people are struggling on some sort of level and if you can make them happy and, you know, maybe change something in their wiring for that 30 minutes, then that's awesome. Yeah. I've had to, I've had to 
probably just come to terms with that and, and appreciate that, that, you know, I do, I do have people reaching out to me all the time going, you won't believe what that song got me through. Uh, I've had many, many stories and this, this is not coming off in a boastful way whatsoever. Like people going that have changed the course of their lives. They're, some of them are you know, potentially suicidal. Some of them are going through some heavy stuff and they were like, that song got me through it. I'm like, sure. So I didn't, it took me a long time to realize the importance of that, of, of what I'm actually creating while we're busy looking for the scales of success on other scales. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm not realizing that that's the moment. Thank you so much, love. <laughs> Woohoo. Coffee. Coffee. Uh, Woo. you, <laughs> yeah, um, man. So that's, a, that, that's how you learn to, to really appreciate or, or like appreciate success or to factor it in because on a financial thing, it's never happened like it should have for us. And that's, you know, it's actually frustrated. A lot of people are like, why aren't you, why aren't they doing crib stories about your house? Although now they can, I've got a really cool castle in Hartway, but we don't have, um, you know, we've never had the money. The money side has just not happened to us for a whole bunch of reasons, um, which I actually also understand. I go, shit, well, it's terrible branding. You've done some bad, made bad decisions here and there. Um, mm. But the real value in what I've done and what we just ginger created is, is this message that, that, that just goes on and um, has the chance of affecting one person. And I've long been of the opinion that, that if it could change one person's course a little bit for the good, um, then I'm pretty cool there. Yeah, for sure, yeah, man. It's awesome, man. Yeah, it's not always the tangible stuff. It's always the, also the intangible stuff, which uh, which really kind of counts and makes a difference. And then and talking about like making a difference in people and stuff, like coming up to you and saying, um, so weird but so i had a new next door neighbor move in um, and i live in greenwich in london right, All right. and uh, she's a south african girl and she uh, she bought the place next to me like six months ago um and i was like oh we're gonna be speaking with art soon she's like no way she's like i flip and love him <laughs> like I, i've been to 15 of his concerts like i'm like i'm a massive fan you know so i was like okay cool well, you have to ask a question then so she was like oh she sent me like three questions and i was like okay cool so so one of her questions was um what inspired you to do a cover of sugar man and then off the back of that, um, I think you also have like a really cool story um, with uh, Rodriguez and like he was on stage with you. I don't know if you performed together, but like there's a cool story around that um, anyway. Yeah, so the, so that happened uh, growing up on the bluff, Durban. Over there, just excuse the guns. Can the guns actually fit in on this? Yes, but things? no way. Yeah, yes, one need... at a time, one at yeah, a time. No, sorry, excuse thank goodness yeah. it's a wide angle lens here, so we're good, we're safe. <laughs> um, <laughs> But I grew up on the bluff and it's one of those things that as you look back on it, well, it was a rough, it was rough. I mean, the saying was rough and tough and smoke that stuff, which weirdly, and people don't know this, but I never, I really hated weed. I still hate weed. I don't hate it. I, I believe in the medicinal properties of it with my whole life, but I'm not a smoker. I had dreadlocks my whole life. People think I've, I've been stoned my whole life and it's understandable, human nature again, <laughs> but um, I just didn't smoke. And so being on the bluff, there was one album that 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 kind of resonated and was a you know we had nothing so we so when an album came onto the bluff it was unbelievable and when there was electricity to play that album it was even more amazing um so the one the one, one big record was rodriguez and it was this and the story when we were sitting on the beach i don't know where it came up from but it, it felt sounded pretty universal because you asked one or two other people and they're like yeah 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 that's what happened but the story was that he had shot himself on stage that's what i had that's what i grew up knowing had no google to verify it we're on the bluff. We couldn't even go into town to check to ask the other civilized people <laughs> if that was true or not. Um, so, so I, so I just kept it with me the whole time. I'm like, I was like, oh, jeez, man, that guy's got that's hectic. That's pretty. That's a lot of issues. You've got issues when you're doing that. Very, very hectic, but also kind of cool. <laughs> Mainly hectic, but pretty cool. <laughs> very cool, but kind of hectic. <laughs> So, uh, so I was like, we had had our first success with that first record that came out. And I said to Brent, I was like, dude, I know this obscure track, man, um, called Sugar Man. The guy shot himself on stage. Let's do a dedication to him. Well, you know, tribute obviously can't be to him because he has no head. So you could, won't be to him directly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but it's in his honor, you know, maybe his family will appreciate it or something like that. So we're like 100%. So we did, we did the song Sugar Man. And as we all know, it actually, it actually had quite big success in South Africa. And um, man, weeks later, we got the we got a phone call from the record company going, "Hey, man, Rodriguez really loves your version of the song." <laughs> We're like, 
Uh-huh. Like, well, how can that? How can that be? I mean, did you have a séance last night or something? <laughs> <laughs> He's talking to me now. <laughs> <laughs> the coffee's moving across the table. Is that you? Is that you, Jesus? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, to, I mean, you know, long story short, that obviously they made that whole movie, Finding Finding Sugar Man. Um, which I will say, not going to lie, a little bit bitter. They didn't mention us once, but it was a very big reason why I came to South Africa and had a massive career uh, in South Africa. Wow, it, was, it, was, it was months after our song was very big. And uh, I remember him coming to Standard Bank Arena and like literally taking it. It was like seeing, it was like seeing a ghost, you know, except it was my childhood hero, uh, wow. especially in a singer-songwriter sense. And I did manage to get him up onto stage while we did Sugar Man. And you can only imagine, yes. the, you know, the rapture of the crowd. So a very big moment in that time. Jeez. And really, really cool. And he ended up having a beautiful, beautiful career, which is well-deserved. And his head was very much intact. So the, the bullet obviously missed. <laughs> and I'm very, very glad, glad about that. Yes. So, so you were full on like at the front edge of his success in South Africa. Well, I believe so. I mean, he came, he, he, came, yeah, he came on the back of like after our song had been a very, very big hit. He, wow. he, he pulled into the country and um, yeah, and, and he, he, did are, he started doing arenas himself. Um, but it is interesting in that movie that like they don't even mention the the, the big ginger song. They're like it's like these guys who, how they found him, and it's it's wonderful. I'm very glad that he that he had a um, a revived career and got some of that money back as well because he also got ripped incredibly. But we yeah. were definitely a very big part of it. There's no question. You ask you ask people to this day who 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 does Sugar Man belong to, and many of them will mistakenly say us, you know, because <laughs> yeah, that's because that was that was part of it in the beginning, you know. Yeah, man. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Awesome story, bud. Yeah. And, and he, yeah, he, I mean, I suppose he was a victim to, 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 to like the big companies as well, you know, oh. just like you were as well. So, you know, it wasn't him necessarily. He just kind of went along with whatever, you know? Yeah. No, again, it just had no, the guy was pumping gas in Detroit. Yeah. He had no idea that there'd been money completely swindled from him and that these albums had done well. The record company <laughs> never reported to him. And he was basically in construction at the age of the late, yeah. I mean, his late sixties. Yeah, Still yeah. doing hard yeah. labor. Jesus. So it's sad. So crazy, it's just man. sad. It's really cool that it that it um, turned around again. It's nowhere near as big as it as it should have been. Yeah, he made a little bit of money, and you know the story is that he still lives very humbly and in that little place, and gives most of it to his kids as as any father would. Yeah, and so it's a very cool a very cool story. But that's that was my association. We did it as a tribute. I had no idea that the man was still alive. Yes. Wow. Crazy. Yeah, cool story though, man. By the way, Jeez. very. I'm glad he's alive. It's a hectic yeah, story, yeah, but it was pretty hectic. cool. Quite cool. Story. <laughs> it's cool that he's alive. <laughs> Better that he's alive for sure. Maybe. <laughs> um, so, so, Art, you, um, as you mentioned earlier, you actually did win the Sama, which is amazing for your for your latest solo album, Impossible Machines. Uh, congratulations on that, obviously. Thank um, you. Mao, doing your own thing has given you, I suppose, certain artistic freedoms and and self expression through your music and you know, not, not having the, the claws of someone else, you know, from these big companies in you and that kind of thing. What are the pros and cons to working on your own? Um, well, the pros are that you, that you own all your stuff and the cons are, it's just about how do you get it out there now? You know, cause uh, having the, the machine of the record company, having that infrastructure certainly helps you. And, you know, so you have a team around you whereas by yourself, I do have a very small little kind of team and I've like recently, recently now I've also got a, got a little social media team behind me to, to, to just kind of uh, just perpetuate what, what I've done and, and, and to add on. So it's nonstop. You, the self-promotion never ends. It's one of my worst things to do. I can't stand it. It goes against everything that I am, but I have to do it. I, ha- I ha- No one can promote me more than me. So I have mm. to. Um, so the, the yeah the pros are that you just have all the freedom in the world to do what you want. That can actually also be a con to some artists because they just end up releasing garbage because they have mm-hmm. no direction, you know. I, and I'm I'm sure of yeah I, I, that doesn't exclude me. But um, yeah, I think I think the yeah the cons are you just don't get the support that you that you probably need to go to any other level because it's getting really harder and harder. Because now the thing is that anyone who owns a cell phone can literally fart into the microphone and you can upload it to Spotify tomorrow. Yeah. That's the truth. That is, you could hear the sound of his fart and it hasn't gone through any A&Ring. There's been no, there's been no team going, well, I don't think that's the single. Maybe the burp is going to be the single. Um, <laughs> 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 do, you know, do you know what I mean? Anyone. So it's literally just 
the whole world is, is available now. So now how do you make yourself heard through all that? So that's the interesting thing, at least in our, in our day. Oh, I can't believe I just said that at 44. <laughs> And I, you know, oh, young man. back Zero in the day, old man. days, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, back in our day, we, we had the record companies, you know, you, if you got signed, you couldn't even record unless you were signed, you couldn't even, unless you knew an uncle who had a garage studio and probably was crap or it could have been okay. But I mean, but you know, you couldn't even get into a studio before you were signed to a record company. So that, that was the transition. So at least there was a little bit of quality control in that regard, uh, a little bit of a process, but now anyone now right now i can release this tomorrow on spotify and call it my new christmas you know it's just it's just crazy don't worry we'll do that for you <laughs> okay awesome we chop yeah, it up yeah. and resample it <laughs> yeah, Come yeah. Down. we can Come do down. amazing stuff with these videos <laughs> but you'll, never see. you'll be like yes that's a good tune <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 i love it okay <laughs> no, but so so talking about like making your music and stuff and you actually played all the instruments on your album how do you actually even go about doing that? Is there like looping involved or whatever? Yeah, of course. So you have to, you have to start with one. <laughs> you can't, you can't. And that's where, that's where I guess I'm very happy that my drumming, of my drumming background, you know, because I had a pretty good idea of, of grid with, with, with beats. And um, I did, um, yeah, you just put a basic beat down and then it starts with bass. I've got a beautiful 75 Fender Jazz um, that a friend of mine found underneath this Indian guy's house in like Chats, Chatsworth in Devon. He had no idea what it was, what it was, but it's a vintage, it's a vintage, beautiful Fender Jazz, which I somehow managed to get. The neck is terrible. It plays terribly, but it sounds like you can't believe. So, um, so yeah, so you put a beat down, put some bass guitar on it and then some keys and then some guitar. So you obviously layering it all on top, you know, of each other. That's how multi-track recording works, whether it's you or 10 or, or five people in a band anyway, you know, it's all all the layers, and then uh, on Impossible Machines, I recorded those back. Those at the end of the song, you hear like it sounds like there's a choir, but it's just me, and I, and I, I sang it twenty times Jeez, at the same man. time, and I just and I just made like I pretended to be drunk. One of the voices, I pretended to be a girl. One of the voices it really <laughs> helps if you're schizophrenic, by the way. To <laughs> Yeah, calling on Johnny. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I got Rodriguez on there as well. <laughs> yes. So uh, you can have a lot of fun, you know. You can also get really caught up, and you can um, you can you can lose clarity or, or perspective on it, which I did often. And so I had my friend Al from a rapper. He used I'd be like, dude, I did this last night. Come off the coffee. Come listen and see if I'm not going nuts. And he was uh, he was just wonderful. He was, he was um, I also had a girlfriend at the time who you know you could you could show. Like what? What you're doing? So they can they can either they can just confirm that it's you know whatever it is you know. So it was nice to be able to bounce that off because that, that gets quite daunting when you're doing it all yourself. You have no perspective. Um, <clears throat> but man, that it just happened it happened naturally and beautiful, and it was yeah. I'm very proud of that record. Yes, but it's so. I mean, I'm always like mesmerized and like fascinated by how I think personally intelligent musicians are. Like it's this whole other type of thinking, you know, because it's it's not just like music and, and whatever and beats and whatever. It's like mathematics and it's like creativeness and it's it's these these realms of intelligence. I feel like, you know, and, and maybe it's like something you just almost take for granted. You know what I mean? Like it's just the, it's incredible what you actually do. Thank you. Yeah, I, th I, I think to people who aren't operating from that side of their brain or, or you know, maybe it, it seems as crazy as me seeing someone who's that good with numbers, you know, being, um, but it's, it's as natural for them. And as it is for me, um, it's really, really simple to me. So like, mm -hmm. I'll never get writer's block simply because I'll never write unless I want to. So people are, do you ever get writer's block? No, but I'm not going to sit down every day and go, I have to write a song because then you're going to get a block. That's what's going to happen. So don't, <laughs> don't do that. Just like, <laughs> listen, uh, uh, you know, from a professional point of view that might hamper your overall, um, delivery of, or, or you know, however many your your overall catalog, but again, like, what are we measuring anything by? Like, when I die, am I going to be heralded for having released fifty albums, or is it going to be for one decent one? You know, so I don't know. What, I've had to let, I've had to let go of a lot of those metrics and measurements as to what defines success. You know, mm. um, one of them being financial. I'm just like, no, I mean, I'm okay. I'm I'm very grateful for everything that I have. I own a house, and um, I, and I'm cool, but. It's nowhere near the wealth that other bands who, who did half as well as we did managed to get. Not in this country, but like abroad, like a lot of the American mm -hmm. bands 
whatever. Uh, I'm just saying, like, it's, you, you do always look and go, sure, if we just somehow missed that just because of a, a bad decision or, 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 or something, you know? Um, <clears throat> but you're also still yeah. young, bud, let's be honest. I mean, you're 44. I am, like, I am, I and, do, I, yeah, yeah. And, and like, everything probably happens for a reason, you know what I mean? So, so now you have this, all this, like, knowledge and wisdom and you know, I can never say never. Like you know, I oh, know, I, I, not at all. I, I mean, this this just happened now that 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 the, that the album got acknowledged, and um, so I I'm all about it. I'm I'm a super young person uh, in mind and heart, and um, and I really I really believe the best is yet to come. Uh, like I literally believe I, I I joke to so many people. I was like, you know, the twenty odd years in Ginger was literally my band practice room. Mm. Um, so that's and that is how I feel, and I'm not going to stop. But it's just, you know, you do start thinking of other things like I want to, I, I, I want to be on a boat. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> yeah. So, but I want to do all of this. I can, we can do this on a boat and I can record on a boat and, and, um, the whole, I mean, I'm in Berlin and I must say, like, I'm really trying to consider how to be partly based here. It's so vibrant. The city is unfreaking mm. believable. You know, I, you know, I got an Uber bicycle, Uber electric bicycle yesterday. It just blew my brain that it's, it's there. It's parked there. No one's. It's not burnt yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's still there. It's still there. <laughs> get both wheels, all the brakes work. Yes. And um, it's, you know, it's just a very progressive place to be. So like, I want to come check out if, if I want to get involved here. Yeah. So mm. it's, it's interesting after, after so much push and it, and it resulting in this little Sama, it's actually put me in a weird place to be honest. Cause I, it's like all, it's like all that much ado about really that. And don't get me wrong. There's no diss towards, towards the, mm. the, the great gesture that, that that's been, but it, it's made me like sit back and go, phew, man, I've been working, I've been working a long time on this. Yeah. And, and what next really? Because, because there's a lot to do in life. Maybe, maybe all this time, maybe this is just a part of my journey. What I've done up until to this day, maybe I'm meant to be a mountaineer. Yeah. <laughs> it's unlikely. <laughs> I'm far too fat for that, but I'm just saying, like, what, like, what if, what if, like, so I'm at that point where I'm going, totally. geez, like, well, like, what is it? One thing I do know and that resonates with me is that I, I, I'm, I'm just, uh, it'll be silly to stop because I enjoy it too much. So that's fine. So, I, and I can, I can, and I've seen, I can do it by myself. And so I will continue to do that. I'm also a lot more open to collaborating now, which I will also do. I've had a weird block about that my whole life. Maybe it's because I wanted to prove myself, which mm. I, I believe I have um, in a lot of ways. Um, so I'm in a bit of a, I'm in an interesting little, little time, to be honest. Um, and I'm just checking out what, what's next. I'm really literally sitting here going, okay, what's next? Just to, just reveal yourself, you know? Yeah. It's cool, man. You know what? You, it's so important. What you're saying is like, what, what is your yardstick that you are measuring your life and your, your self-worth by really? Yeah. And I mean, it's a tough question for anybody. And I think, you know, as Gareth said, you know, all these little things that you go through, it's just experiences at the end of the day and they, they, they teach you something you learn something and you'll have a bunch more of these and for the rest of your life and that that's it really and then just enjoy those journey that journey uh, even exactly on your that, <laughs> exactly that it really is it's it's a it's a progression of lessons that that you never stop learning and uh, i think just being willing to appreciate every experience no matter how daunting or embarrassing or sad or anything just go well, shit, man this is a teacher this is a big teacher what is it what what is it for and if you can adapt and adopt that um to anything like anyone that you meet like you you can't be offended you it's only you can choose to be offended mm. no one can offend me i if, if they, li they literally physically have to touch my mother before do you know what i mean before yeah, i would yeah. get before I'd be like, hey, that's that's out of line. But they could flick her. I, they wouldn't. I wouldn't care. I'd be like, that's your shit. I'd be like, come on, let's go this way. What's my girlfriend? I'd be like, come, let's go this way. It's like, don't need to, you know, don't need to, like, um, yeah. get caught up in that stuff. So if you can, but if you can also take out of that and go, sure, I wonder why that that abrasion happened. And you go, what lesson can I learn from that? And and I'm of the belief that I believe, I literally believe, everyone is your greatest teacher that you'll ever have. Hmm. Uh, some of them are more profound, especially the beautiful soul people that you find and, and the people, the person people in your life. Um, obviously they, they'll, they'll teach you immensely. Um, but if you, if you, if you accept that everyone you meet from the person who accidentally bumps in the street to the person who opens the door for you and is kind and stuff like that. And if you take, if you take them all as teachers, it's actually quite a, it's quite hmm. a cool little, it's quite a cool little vibe out there. You know, like a, mm -hmm. every day is a playground of lessons to be learned in the, in the best way. Yeah. 
but super well said but that's <laughs> like, resonates very very much with us cool some good stuff in your coffee there but <laughs> yeah, yeah. what's going on i mean coffee? what did you put in here <laughs> <This> is... <laughs> <laughs> so odd um look i mean the the combination I'm saying there's good stuff in my coffee <laughs> yeah yeah really good <laughs> so so yeah. the combination of um sort of music and very moving music and, and meaningful lyrics mm. um it's, it's very ca- powerful combination for for us and um maybe you can discuss sort of two things like can you tell us a little bit about how you write songs and the creative process how you get down that into those deep like emotional places that you're so good at and also maybe you can tell us a little bit about like Maybe a specific song that stands out for you. Um, it's hard to do to ex, um, explain the process because it just because it comes so naturally for me. You know, it's like it's like asking someone why when you get on a bike, how do you get to balance like that and take corners the way you do? It's like mm. it's just. Do you know what I mean? Like it's very hard to just sum it up and go. Well, it's many years of knowing that the right angle at this velocity does this and you know, I'm just sitting, I'm now comfortable. So for me to tell you when, how the process happens, what I can tell you is that it's not, it's not um, defined. Like I remember having what he means that peace, love, more tolerance song. I had that melody in my head for three years before I put words to it. I was like, okay, that's cool. I was like, I have to go make a song of this immediately. Or I was like, no. In fact, I, I, I made a song of it just so it would stop annoying me, but it took three years. <laughs> uh, one, uh, one evening in Los Angeles, we were watching Conan O'Brien, Denim Harding, uh, our bass guitarist, and I used to share a flat there. And um, after Conan, I was just like, it was late night show then. So was, we, we were super night owls. We used to go to bed really late. Still do. Uh, this morning was a challenge. And it was 11 o'clock. <laughs> um, um, you went straight for that time slot. Now we know. Yeah, so we noticed yeah. that. You were like I the know. latest slot. Yeah, I promise you, I set the alarm for 10 30. I'm not kidding. I'm, I'm in Berlin. I'm, I'm, seeing, I'm seeing everything I can. So we, we yeah, made a concerted course. effort to, uh, to be home for this. Uh, <laughs> but now where was up. Oh, no, you're so welcome. I've, I've completely forgotten my. No, you were talking about you were in. Uh, you were sharing a room. Oh uh, yes, with them. Yeah. yeah, and after 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 Conan, I was just like I just got up, went into my went into my bedroom and just da 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 half an hour, went down sat sat back down with with them and I said, bro, I've written a song. He said, cool. Uh. Said, cool. We'll we'll play it tomorrow in the band room. I was like, okay, Kev. Carried on watching TV, <laughs> went to bed, and what he means had been written in, in its entirety in half an hour. No way. It just came. It's just like it was. It's a bit. Of, it doesn't happen like that all the time. That was definitely a channeling moment, uh, without wow. getting deep. But I was there's something just channeled. I was just like, doo, 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 doo. if there is great, if the light, and let us use it. Let it sh- but starting right now, boom. That's just how wow. it came. And yeah, I wish I wish I'd have, because <clears throat> I'm so bad with um, material possessions. So bad. I don't own a single CD of mine ever. If if my you know, whole life depended on, it, I wouldn't be able to show you that I've actually made a CD in my life. So I don't, I don't, <laughs> I really don't. I, I hate, I hate these, these. It's actually a joke in the band. Denim was like, if, <laughs> if you ever want to keep a secret, give it to Art on a CD. And you're like, <laughs> Gone. <laughs> it's actually, it's actually so, it's very funny, but it's very true. I'm terrible at keeping those shiny, spinny things. And, and <laughs> most things that people like, like keep as, like keep sex because it came from this time. And then I, I'm just terrible like that. My point is that I don't have I don't have that I wish I had that notepad of where I wrote what he means down, you know, because that would be quite cool just to look at it. Fortunately, yeah. fortunately I've got um I have managed to keep only because it's my house now, so it's very hard to lose things. Um but I've got I've got the whole notepad of how impossible machines was written and it's a whole it was handwritten. First first album I've handwritten <laughs> since the first one. Um so I've got that. That's a nice little keepsake uh for me. And yeah, so these songs just come. They they either come in half now or they take three years to, 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 you know, to kind of figure out. Um, there's no process. I could have words. I've had words where I've gone just one day, look at words and go, Oh, okay. Well, today's the day that melody will go to it. Um, and is there anything, just, is there anything that you like, sorry, it's interrupted there. Is there anything that you are, um, specifically inspired by like to uh, write, like, oh, is it books you um, read or movies? No, or I wish, man. I wish I, I Oh, hold on. Sorry, I think I pulled this up. <laughs> okay, hold on, there we go. Um, no, uh, it's it's no nothing specific that I can think of. Um, I guess I guess some just basic 
observation of life and the loss of life and then love and the loss of love have been those, those that I've answered that question pretty much as long as I can remember for the last 20 years. So I, those are all, those are things like, and I do it observationally. Like I can put, put myself in a situation of what it must feel like to be hurt that bad. Now, obviously like Shayla Water wasn't a personal experience. One or two songs that were personal, but I now can think like I kind of pretend to, 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 to know what it might feel like <clears throat> in, you know, kind of in that situation. Like there's a song on the new record called should have stayed. And it's always about that one person that should have stayed, you know, you don't know and you carry on your life and it's beautiful, but always in the back of your mind, you wonder if, if that's not the one that, that got away. So yeah. I don't have, I don't have that person. Uh, um, I really don't. There's not, there's no, there's no one who I believe should have stayed because they were just there for the time and that they were my beautiful teachers in that moment, you know? And, um, <clears throat> but I managed to go there as I had just figured out that I'd lost the one that should have stayed. And you, you know, you'll, you'll hear the emotion in that song. So it's a complete like separation of being able to, to put myself there. So, so, so that's it. I mean, I don't know if that's a technique or I wouldn't be able to write a book about it. It'd be boring as hell. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can transcribe this for you, but then there's your book. It's your first short one. So you, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. you, can, you can sing about it maybe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Be better. Okay. <laughs> um, All right. Sorry, but I thought you were going to say something. Else. No, no. Um, all right. So, so odd. Right, look, I mean, we we're kind of pushing time here a little bit. So, so we're just going to just move things along a little bit. Um, mm. I, I, there was one thing I definitely wanted to to ask you about, and there's there's something, and you mentioned it earlier. Actually, there's not everyone can say that they live in a castle. Yeah. And uh, maybe just tell us a little bit about that, and and your studio, and and the dungeon, and this kind of thing. Yeah. So it really is. It's a bit of a fairy tale story. Um. I was looking for property in Cape Town about four years ago and I was quite bummed. I'd actually lost a deal. The agent had done a terrible job at, at he just, he really messed it up and he, he, he felt horrible. So it's no judgment. It actually has worked out beautifully. Um, <clears throat> but I was quite bummed because I'd lost a house in Woodstock that I was pretty stoked to, to have. It was, um, and I've always owned properties, but they've always been for my mom. So I was now looking for something for me, you know? Um, and so I was stoked with this one and I was a bit bummed. I, was, I remember driving with the dogs to Hart Bay and my mom was online and she said, look at this weird thing that I, that's come up on property 24. And it was literally a picture of a turret of a tower <laughs> and a picture of the gate. And that was all the old lady who stayed in there before was so, was so <laughs> pedantic. She didn't even, she wanted to sell the house, but she wouldn't allow people in to take photos. <laughs> Just, but if you get to meet her, uh, and, He'll understand why she's really, really eccentric, and beautiful, she's awesome. She's she was like a like a teacher at, at an art school in her nineties. So she she's she really wow. super trippy, um, but very cool. So I was there with a friend of mine. He said, "Oh, I, I know I know that building. It's got a windmill outside of it." I'm like, I didn't know. That's amazing. So I said, "Let me let me go and drive past and have a look at it." But I mean, it looks pretty, very unique. And as I drove up to the gate she was pulling into her, into the, into the garage, which is like, it's like, that's like catching a, a rabbit. You know what I mean? It's like, it's just not going to happen. It's, you, you're not going to go into the property. You're not, never mind actually get to meet her. And she pulled into the gate. I pulled up outside, looked down the driveway, looked at the castle. I said, I said, do you understand that this is my property? <laughs> and she said, yes, I do. And I was no like, way. Oh, yeah, I swear that's how it was. I, it was. It was literally like that. And I said, okay, cool. In respect of your privacy and all that, I'm going to arrange to come see the property tomorrow and uh, I'll come see it. She was like, fantastic, cool. So she had already had an offer on the table, but people wanted to really convert it into, because it's quite a large property. And they'd, they had told her of the, their plans and she didn't like what they wanted to do with it. Huh. <clears throat> so I went and saw the place the next day and it's a, it's a, it's a heritage site, Scottish castle. It's wow. ridiculous. If you, go, if you go into my Instagram, you'll see um a couple of photos of it and i was walking down in the lounge and there's a little trap door and i was like what is this? obviously you got to tell me what that is yes. i mean I, uh, <laughs> you can't have a trap door not now and she was like oh it's nothing it's storage i was like no 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 so good listen to me what is beneath the trap door so, <laughs> so she says just storage i was like okay cool well let me see the stuff that you're storing hopefully it's not dead bodies and we should be good <laughs> um, <laughs> um 
He's probably found Rodriguez in there. Like, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, it's starting, but. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly where you've been. Um, so we opened the door and it was this, just this dungeon. But it was quite, in those days, they used to be, even my, at my short height, my head was pretty, pretty close from the ceiling. And it was indeed just storage stuff, thankfully. Uh, clothes and things like that. But it had a fireplace in it and everything. And as I walked down the stairs, huh? I, was like, I was like, huh, here's my studio for sure. No ways. Yeah, I just I saw it all, just like tick, 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 like perfect. And um, the guy, the her her ex partner, had been the head oboe player for the Cape Town Philharmonic for twenty years. He used to build oboes down there, so it just had this whole aura. Never mind the rest so of the property; cool. it's just you uh, you can't believe the rest of the property. It's so beautiful. Uh, we ended up having to, yeah. Anyway, so I did the deal. I said I said I'm not going to move anything. This this is going to to the next musical thing that's happened in this castle. And, and we just had a beautiful rapport and I managed to figure it out, mm-hmm. gave, her, gave her as much as I could afford. Um, and yeah, so that happened. And the, the very first project I did, um, I had Dina Moran, who, who, who's, uh, who, who owns a, a, a sound um, sculpting company uh, in Cape Town. And he came down to the house one day and he was like, oh, check this floor. And he started lifting a little rock off the basement floor, off the dungeon floor. And I was like, dude, hey, hey, hey what are you doing? Don't break my house. And he's like, no, bro, this is, this is literally. And I mean, that house in Hat Bay is built on a dune for as long as it has. So it's, it's sitting on that dune hard. It has sunk in there mm-hmm. a long time ago, you know? And he's like, no, bro, this is, this is just loose rock. But ultimately, this is all sand in the dungeon. I was like, okay. So he was like, well, why don't you take, why don't you take some down? Why don't we go down a bit? I was like, well, that'll be amazing because I'm already short and it's already touching my head. So I said, let's, let's try and get some volume in here. So we took down 70 centimeters of sand. Wow. Poor <laughs> brand new foundation, <laughs> new, new slab. And we ended up putting a floating pine floor on there. And it's just, it's now a big voluminous whole another dwelling. And it's just, yes. yeah. And it's, amazing. So right? big thank you to Dino for having that vision. Um, and it's just, it just turned out beautifully. I mean, I, I had a few of my engineering friends who were having heart attacks. They were like, what? You're re-throwing? The, w- uh, how long have you done this? How long did it take you to do it? Like, no, we did it like in a week. It was like, what? <laughs> and like, you're supposed to do one corner, you know, <laughs> and let it dry. We're like, no, it's all it's finished already, but it's quite good. I don't think this castle's going anywhere. These are very, very big, thick stone walls that it now has, a, and now has a slab, which it never had. So um, anyway, it was, it's just been an interesting project, though. Yes, That's super yeah. cool, my man. Yes, living in a castle. What a pleasure, man. <laughs> yeah, it's super cool. It's really cool. Yes, that's really cool, man. And I've got a, I've, got, I've met uh, when we were moving in there. There was a, there was this, there was this homie standing at uh, at the traffic light with a little sign going, "Need some work." I was like, "Dude, I'm moving into the house. It's empty. Come and I'll, I'll pay you a day rate." Um, and his name's Andrea, Andrea Casepo, Malawian mm-hmm. guy. And I gave him a day's work and he worked so incredibly well while we were all moving in and cleaning and stuff like that. He literally moved a, a job that I thought in the garden would take months. He did it in a few days. I was like, dude, wow. it's amazing. I said, I've got this little, I've got this uh, abode outside the back of the house. I said, I mean, I'm kind of looking for someone to stay full time. You know, would you be keen? He's like, he's like, you have, are you joking? You have no idea. He was no staying, ways, but- yeah, he was staying in this tiny little tiny little hut with three other guys in the township across the road. And, um, and so I said, dude, let's, I said, let's go and get your stuff. <laughs> so no I, was like, I was yes. like, I was like, I'm not, I was like, I can't come with because I still had like a little, some dreadlocks. I was like, I don't want the association yet. Yeah. You know, it would have been minor, but I was like, I'm going to send my mate in his bucky to go to your place and we're going to get your stuff. He's like, amazing. Cool. Let's go. So, so they, they went into the township and Andrea ran into the house, came and put a backpack in the back of the bucket. And my mate was like, okay, well, let's get your stuff. He was like, no, that's, that's my stuff. Wow. I was like, wow. wow. You're joking. Yeah, bro. So he is, um, <clears throat> he's been very lovingly nicknamed Andrea Bocelli because it's a musical household. So <laughs> 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 You've never heard of the blind singing in his life before, but everyone calls him, <laughs> everyone calls him Mr. Bocelli. And he's, uh, he's, he's an absolute sweetheart. The dogs love him more than me. Sadly. and uh you know so it's been a very very charmed life i have i have a castle with a butler who can't pour a glass of milk and that's and it's just a beautiful <laughs> this is a beautiful oh, life. amazing <laughs> oh, Eva, that's wow. that's one of the best stories i've ever heard man that's so cool <laughs> yes <laughs> uh, wow but yeah. just before we ask uh, the, the last question um mm. just like to sort of find out a bit about like 
what you're excited about for the future. There's talk of you being really interested in doing a, a track with Black Coffee. And then um, I guess off the back of that, uh, where can people, you know, get a hold of you or get in touch with you? Um, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I, I'm an open book at the moment. I don't even know really the discussion around the Black Coffee thing. But geez, if that had to happen, I'd, I'd be on it. I'd freak out. It'd be insane. Um, but I'm not, you know, I'm also not actively pursuing the next obvious things that, that I seem to see people doing. Uh, my, my, my father uh, was Afrikaans, Andres Pietro Stefanos Brits. So I'm, so I'm actually 100% half Afrikaans. And I've always spoken Afrikaans pretty fluently. And so I've written a couple of Afrikaans songs and I have every right to do so. And, and, uh, and I think that, uh, so that'll be fun. I might just put that out anyway. I'm going to probably look for a, for a cool um, female Afrikaans singer to, to collab on that. But as I say, I'm not, I feel like I'm not going to do the obvious steps of, well, now we've done this, now you've got to collab, now you've got to do the remix, and you've got to find this DJ to help boost your career, and these things. And, uh, just, I'm, I, I know I'm supposed to be super enthused to do that, but I'm not at the moment. Uh, like I'm enthused to carry on doing what I'm doing, and the result will be the result. That's kind of where I'm at, because I'm actually cool. I'm, you know what I mean? I'd, I've always be open for more, but what I have is I, I can be really cool with it forever. And I can be on a boat where some people will never have the freedom to be on a boat. And you know what I mean? And so it's, it's hard because it's, it, it kind of cuts out career drive as such. So I don't have massive drive. I'm open to everything and I'm excited about any opportunity to happen. But I'm not going to go and <clears throat> forcefully chase the next steps of progression according to what other people think it should be. Mm -hmm. What I am going to do is I'm going to create my little body of work and uh, it's going to do what it's going to do for the next couple of years, maybe a few years after I die. And that's probably what it's going to be. I don't, I don't think it's going to be much more than that. I, I, but I don't think anyone who, you know, I, that's it's getting into a little bit of a, that point of view where, that I have, that I don't think anything happens for long enough or that anyone should mm -hmm. freak out. You know, it doesn't matter what legacy you leave, how many millions you have. When we die, we die in a couple of thousand years. When, when the poles shift and we have another ice age, it's going to be irrelevant. So just have, have a draw now. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like have, <laughs> have, 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 just have fun and do the best you can. And uh, as long as, so for me, as long as uh, there's one person who, who can take some solace, hopefully from, from anything that I do while I'm here and mainly take, take joy. Cause that's what I'd like to share. Just, just offer as much joy. I do, I do laugh pretty much at everything. Uh, sometimes to my detriment, sometimes I need to be serious and I can't, at the, end, at the end of the day, I can't take it seriously. So if you're looking for me to do anything serious, this, I'm not your man. Um, but if you want to have an absolute drawl and just talk about how ridiculous it is that we're hurtling through space on this organic ball, <laughs> trying, to not, <laughs> trying to not be burned by this massive piece of radiation in the sky, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> then, then we could talk about that, you know? So, and the rest of it is just, it's just a game and it's fun. And um, yeah, it's been an honor. Cool. Yes, well, yes. It really has been, man. And, and you mentioned the word ridiculously. And our last question is, what does being ridiculously human mean to you, Art? Um, I, think, I think we all are, but I think we are ridiculously human. And it would be wonderful if people would actually just understand that and make peace with that. Because then we could be ridiculously cool humans. Um, mm. And unfortunately, we, you know, as I say, everyone's just going through their journey before they, they get to realize that <clears throat> some will never. Um, uh, but yeah, we are, we are all human. Every, everyone makes mistakes. Everyone does stuff that has just very normal human nature things, which we're all bound by. No one is excluded from that. So being ridiculously human is just, just be, be like a, be, be cool. I love it. Us. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Don't be a doer. Yeah. 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 Rule number it one. Sums it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes, well, listen, I just want to, from my side, just um, say a massive thank you for coming on the show. This is a, a massive dream for Gareth and I, you know, like, like, as you said at the beginning, we've massive fans and we've been listening for forever, basically, as it feels. And um, it's been one of those chats where you just once again, so surprised by how normal and how nice people are when you've seen someone from a sort of a different perspective you always have to remember that there's another side to them you just never get to see um and um so like it's so great to to see the side of you and sort of this this celebrity figure in a way you know what i mean like it, it's good to just see like you're just laughing at stuff and and i love how you keep things simple you 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 bring it back down to basics like this is how it is let's have a laugh let's learn something and let's move on 
And these are like massively cool little, um, and this is a great way to see the world in general. And um, so, so just thanks so much for your time and, uh, and, and having us on or well, having us a laugh the whole way through. It's just been like literally like that, that much fun. And <laughs> cool. uh, so, so keep it up, buddy. It's, it's really great what you're doing. Thanks, Bob. I appreciate it. Thanks for your time, guys. Yeah, oh, thanks, man. Just, just from my side, um, I just want people to know that, like, this is the first time we've met together. Okay? But it, it actually, it, it wouldn't sound like that. You would swear we like been buddies for ages. And, and yeah. I, I just think it says so much about you as a person. You know, like you just, you flip and laugh, but then you like, you, you, you make the most of it, like you said. And, and the cool thing is, is what you mentioned in the chat is, you like, um, everyone is a teacher. You know, yeah. and if we can all realize that we would actually have such better relationships with each other, you know, and treat each other maybe a little bit more differently. And in terms of today's chat, like, like I felt you really taught me just to kind of like be a lot less serious and just flip and laugh more. I was like, yes, is, I mean, I do laugh and smile a lot, but I was like, this oak takes another <laughs> level, but it's just like, it's so, it's so refreshing. You know what that's I mean? It's all going like, to be over so soon. That's what people don't yeah, realize, you know? And, and that's not a fatalistic like worries me. It really is. This is yeah. a blip in time. So what are you doing freaking out? Why are you holding yes. grudges? Why, why are you allowing something to affect you that no longer applies to you because it's exists in the past, in the past, you know? So go out there and, and just, you know, be, be taught by everyone is, is kind of the way totally. I see it. Otherwise totally. it's going to be boring, man. It's just going to be boring. Yes, but exactly, man, exactly. So, so yeah, but just so, thanks so much, man. It's just like, it literally has just been so much fun. And, and you're such a smart oak as well, but and, and, and there's so much. Don't be fooled, bro. <laughs> no, but I think you like, like, honestly, like, the, you know, this is, this is genuine. Like, I think there's this real philosophical side to yourself, which we've, you know, we've maybe just touched a little bit on, but, you know, um, if people are really into that side and they're listening, they, they'll be able to hear that. And I think, that is so important, you know, in this sort of day and age. And, uh, but it's just been epic. Thank you so much for being just this cool, normal oak. It's been a total privilege for Craig and I, and we're seriously honored to have you on the podcast, man. So, so I hope you have a great time in Berlin and you get to try every single beer and everything else out there. <laughs> I've got to go, actually. So thank you guys so much for having me, man. Yeah, have a good one. Thank you. Man. All right, bud. Good thanks, place. man. Sure, All right, thanks. bud. Thank you, All right, bud. Cool. Thanks, man. All right, I'd have a great one, buddy. And uh, thanks yeah. once again. We'll, we'll stay in touch. I look forward to having you yeah. be in person one day. Eh? Yeah, definitely, but one hundred percent, man. Awesome, awesome, man. We can have one with Shauna as well. That'll be flipping. <laughs> yeah, that'll be sick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, take care, guys. Bye, See you later, man. Cheers, man. Bye, bye. Waking at dawn, packing the gear, September tour, and up in the air, stop at the toll, digging for.